It's good, everybody. Happy Saturday to y'all out there. Hope everybody's doing okay. Um, uh, I, I hope you guys are doing good. Um, appreciate you as always. <clears throat> Let me see here. Try to change this little thing. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, you know, I got the morning cup of Joe or Joanne, however you want to look at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, let me see here. Um, I was going to start a little bit sooner, but I had decided to grab some, some, um, some Jacob Toppin highlight stuff real quick. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll uh, show that in a little bit. Um, hope you guys are doing good. Hope every, everything life is treating you guys well. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you just got to be thankful to be able to wake up and open your eyes and be able to see the sunshine, even though it's cloudy today. <laughs> <laughs> um let me see what we're dealing with here today you know you always get the weather forecast on the east coast and especially the new york area when you're rocking with me ah yes right now it's cloudy 72 degrees uh, uh in the central park area a uh, high of 81 <laughs> looks like it's supposed to rain all day though you know there's definitely a lot of people upset around these parts talking about i miss the sunshine they feel like they're in seattle people are not people are not feeling good and and oddly enough you know in those types of areas where there's not a lot of sunshine there's a lot of rain a lot of clouds you know people look paler that they um they don't uh give off the same type of energy they just feel different about life so it's a whole it's a whole another ball game so i can understand why some people are getting a little down little little upset about how the weather has been but you know it is what it is um but but yeah you know like i said at least we're able to experience the weather some people uh you know don't have that opportunity all right so <clears throat> Let's shout out to the chat. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. Uh, good morning, Ron. I'm at work waiting on the show. I hope all is well with you and your family. Shout out to Walter Blackman. I appreciate you, my brother. Always a pleasure. And I thank you for your continued support, man. I, I definitely do. Uh, oh, thanks. I appreciate that, too, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Mellow Tech is in the building. He said, good morning, Knicks fam. Was ho hoping that Zion trade happened. The opportunity may resurface. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? We, 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 uh, this is, I don't know. This is definitely a wait and see thing. And, and actuality, the Zion trade to the Knicks, um, if that's what would be talked about, I guess it seems a little bit more probable that if he does get traded, the Knicks could be a possibility because the draft is over. Um, you know, the Pelicans weren't able to trade up and get into that those top three picks uh, in any form or fashion. So, you know, I guess that makes the chances, <clears throat> you know, somewhat still there. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> shout out to shop powers what's good salute to you my brother appreciate you as always please guys if you haven't already check out shop powers and my guy divine nick's real talk you know on youtube uh go like comment subscribe support them let's see hmm Dwayne Dennis is in the building. Salute, my brother. Always good to see you. I appreciate you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Nick's a nice. 
the CAA affiliate is in the building. What up, Pudge? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Knicks fans can't say we don't have rookies. That's, that's that's true. That is true. Keith Turner's in the building. Salute. What's good, my brother? Billy Goat is in the building. Salute. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. Hello, Margaret Edwards. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Happy Saturday. <clears throat> Hey, what's going on? Sean Kern's in the building. I haven't seen you in a little bit. I mean, maybe you popped in here and there, but I really I don't remember seeing you in most recent times. So it's good to see you, brother. My guy, Mega NYK, what's good? Cormega, what's happening? I hope you're doing well, brother. Stream Elements is in the building, holding us down. <clears throat> Hey, what's going on, brother? My guy, David, what's happening? I hope you're doing well, bro. I hope your travels were good. I don't know if you're back home yet. I know you were traveling, so I hope all that went well. And if you're still traveling, continue to enjoy yourself, man. Have a great time. Shout out to all my people's uh, viewing on YouTube as well as Facebook. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. Um, you know, it really means a lot. Um, and And, you know... Can, the, the continued support by everybody has just been great. You know, we're just trying to do as much as we can to give you guys content to talk about our New York Knicks while the off season is definitely uh, going to be uh, dragging along. It's not going to be, you know, a bunch of fun stuff to talk about all the time, but you know, different things keep happening. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, the trade rumors, the speculation, you know, it just continues to happen. Uh, even though not a lot of moves have happened on the Knicks side, uh, you know, at least we did do something. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, let's see. Uh, ah, yeah, facts. Facts. 100%, brother. Um, hmm. That's, that's the interesting question there, Keith Turner. A lot of people are feeling... Uh, very confused about this signing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad signing per se, but it just, with everything going on surrounding OB, it's curious. It's curious. We'll talk a little more about it. Dan Marrero is in the building. Salute, Dan. Hope you're doing well, brother. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, CAA affiliate, my guy Nixon Nice says, Wave Keels. I mean, yeah, maybe. The only thing about Keels is, like, I feel like Keels you know, uh, if you can take him off the two-way contract that he was on and keep him in some lower capacity. I mean, the Knicks got 15 players on the roster. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, guys, if you guys know better. I believe this is the year where the 15-man roster goes to 18, if I'm not mistaken. So I think the Knicks get to have more people on the roster. I might be confused about that. But uh, either way, I mean... Even with 15, the Knicks ain't playing 15 guys. So Keels really doesn't hurt the Knicks if they just want to keep him, like, you know, stash him on the bench somewhere. The kid is 19 years old this year. He was 18 last year when we got him. So he's 19. I mean, he's a puppy. So I mean, we don't know what he is. I mean, some people might say even not knowing what he is, maybe he's not enough. But if, you, if he's not hurting the team and he's filling a spot and you can kind of stash him and see if he becomes something because, you know, Tibbs, I mean, no NBA coach is playing 15 guys either way. So I, I don't, the Keels thing doesn't really bother me. Um, unless you're telling me that the Knicks can go out and get somebody and they have enough money to add somebody that could really help the team and Keels is taking that spot away from him, then okay, I would waive Keels too. But if they're not doing anything with the spot or if there's nothing significant happening there where they actually need to, to waive Keels, might as well just keep him on the bench, man. Hold on to him. He's still a young guy. We don't know what 
what his game can become. He really hasn't had a lot of experience at all. We know he uh, has known to play good defense. Um, he's got a solid um, – uh, who's this guy? Um, Kyle Lowry type frame. And um, he would still have to improve on his shooting to be effective. But, I mean, who knows? I don't know. We'll see. But I hear you, though. Ah, okay. So you believe Martin is our next point guard. But, I mean, that still kind of doesn't really help what I'm looking for. I really wanted the Knicks to get a veteran backup point guard who knows exactly how the NBA works and already has been here. So, you know, day one, they get out there, they break people down, they dish, they swish. You know what I mean? Like, Martin got to learn. Ah. But I hear you, though. That may be the case. And he may give us offensively and as far as orchestration, what someone like Deuce is still working on that hasn't necessarily given us. I don't know. I, I just, you know, this is Tibbs, guys. While Tibbs is here, you know, when are we going to see this guy? If ever. We're going to look at him. He's going to play in the summer league. He might do some nice things. We're going to get all hype. And then we'll never see him on the court for the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see um sherwin is in the building salute sherwin always good to see you brother i hope you're doing well he said good morning knicks fans need to relax uh my two draft targets were trace jackson davis city uh cisco cisosco i don't know how to pronounce that I think that's, I don't know, 6'8", or uh, Jordan Walsh, 6'7". We could have traded Obi for two second-round picks or buy them. Yeah, we could have, but I don't know. Building Block says, and salute to you, my brother. Appreciate you. I can't really complain until the end of the summer. Yeah, I mean, listen, the offseason literally has just begun. So, yeah, there's a lot of time. We haven't even hit the July 1st deadline, like, RJ's uh, RJ Barrett's contract is still a poison pill. That's that's how early this whole thing is. The poison pill hasn't even been, you know, lifted or changed yet. You know, July 1st, I think, is when it it changes over. Uh, and then uh, I believe that's the point where um, RJ's new contract takes effect. Uh, let's see. Summer league in two weeks, man, it's crazy. Uh, Keith says this team is a mess. I'm in a bad space with the franchise right now. It's early. It's not even July first, Keith Turner. Just calm down. It's okay. Nothing has happened, and nothing needs to happen. At I mean, I think something needs to happen before July first, but that's just my thoughts on how they need to move because of certain things. But we don't know what they're gonna do. It's very early. Uh, Jeremy Nussbaum is in the building. Salute, Jeremy. Hope you're doing well. Always a pleasure to see you, brother. Uh, D Coolest 718 is in the building. Salute. Good to see you as well, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, my guy Wiz, Ashley Inc. is in the building. Salute. And yes, do what he said. Smash that like button. Show your love for the show. Appreciate you. Francisco Carillo is in the building. I uh, appreciate you. Um, let me see. Kaiser seven uh, seven one eight. Kaiser Jose seven one eight is in the building. He's asking if Keels is really 6'8". If so, might get some burn at small four. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if – I know Sherwin was saying that they don't know if he's really 6'8". Um, oh, okay. Well, no, it's reported that Keels has grown three inches. He is now 6'8". Yeah, I forgot. Someone else on the Knicks had said this dude grew. He sprouted. I, I forgot who said that. Um. Well, yeah, if that's the case, if he grew to 6'8", <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't know. It definitely. I mean, it's a chance. I mean, he was 18 when we got him, so he's definitely still growing. I mean, he definitely ain't got no. Yeah, that's that's very true, building blocks. 
But listen, let me tell you something. I, I got to see it on the court, okay? I ain't, I ain't not going off of this whole thing. With Keels, maybe because he's still very young. But remember they did this with RJ? Remember two years ago they said RJ grew like two inches? Then I see RJ, he looks the same. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, RJ is 6'8 now, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Hector Gaston is in the building. Salute, Hector. Good to see you. He said, not mad at this draft. We made the second round um, like these undrafted free agents. No, and, and first off, not for, yeah, I hear you, Hector. Not for nothing, but, you know, see, this is the other thing that I, I, I always have to go back and forth with, guys. You remember two years ago, before this draft was coming, people were like, oh, this draft is going to be incredible. Watch out, guys. This is, this is the one to get into. Now we're here. And this draft didn't seem like that at all. <laughs> and I'm not saying there's no good players in this draft. There's probably a lot of players that are going to have to show and prove, like names that you're going to have to see out there. They're going to have to develop, and then we'll just see who rises to the top. But this ain't like the, oh, this is the draft. Like, if you're not in this draft, get these. Play I don't know about that yet. I'm just saying, like, I, to me, I think that's that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, let's, I, that's how I feel at the moment. Yeah, obviously it could change. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> I know I got you. Now I, I hear you. I mean, I, I, like I said, I did hear that he grew. I just don't know how much he grew and what that means. Yeah. Francisco says we just made it to the se to the second. Uh, we are in an upward projection. Tibbs needs to grow as a coach, just like the youngins are developing and growing. Don't hold them back. Starters on the bench, play them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, Keith, it is an accomplishment for a team that hasn't done it <laughs> in ten years. Yeah, how, how can you not say it's not? It'd be one thing if we did it all the time <clears throat> or if we have shown to be uh, a winning franchise these past 10 years, but we weren't. So the fact that they're doing it now in the past in the past three years, the Knicks have turned th this franchise around. OK, last year was a bad year. But if you just look at what they've done, considering what we had before and what we are now, the Knicks are a, a good team. Not they're not a great team, but they are a good team. You can no one can say the Knicks aren't a good team. Okay, they've got good players. They're a good team. That's when you get good players, you're a good team. It doesn't matter because the players are good, so you're gonna be a good team. You got and you get more of those players. This, this is how it is. So it, it's it. I think it's an accomplishment for the Knicks. You guys got to look at it the way I learned to look at it a long time ago. Stop comparing ourselves to the rest of the league. Don't look at it that way. Look at your team on what they are. So if you're a bad team and you get to the playoffs and you win, that's an accomplishment. If you're a, 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 a team that's starting to become better and you make it to the playoffs two years in a row, that's an accomplishment. If you're a good team and you make it to the second round for the first time in 10 years, that's an accomplishment. Now, obviously... If we made it to the second round this year, that's not an accomplishment because we already did it. It's what can you do next? So, I, you know, just, just progression, I'm just saying. But just look at it in the form of the Knicks and what we are. Not about everybody else. It's not an accomplishment for any other team. I, I, could, I hear that. But my, Miami Heat, it's not an accomplishment for Milwaukee. You know what I mean? You get the point. I got you, though. It, but it's the truth, Keith. That's how it is. That's like you working at a job and, and um, you know, you've been in the same job 10 years. You get raises or whatever. Um, and, you know, uh, after 10 years, you get promoted 
to to some other job and it's not necessarily the job you wanted but it's just some somebody left and you take over the job it's an accomplishment because you showed your worth and you got that job that's higher than your job even if you weren't like going for it still an accomplishment you know what i mean you might say oh well i wanted to be the, the ceo that might be what's on your list but if you got promoted you know to to something higher than what you were it's still an accomplishment no one says to uh to uh you know not strive for more though keith i hear you you, you want the team to be better you want the team to not be um you know looked over you want them to be respected and you want them to be an eventually elite championship contender but how else are you going to get there and how else are you going to get players to come here if you don't keep progressing you got to keep showing that you're improving that the team is growing that you're making better choices that there's better coaching the players are executing better and that you're following through and 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 um you know leveling up and the Knicks so far have leveled up. We don't know what they're going to do this year, but they got to level up this year too to con con continue the growth. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I hear you though, Keith. I know you've seen a lot. You, you, <laughs> we, we've been here before. I got it. I got it. Um. All right. See who else we got here. Uh oh, there he is. William is in the building all the way from Brazil. Salute, my brother. Hope you're doing well. He says, Knicks need help the Brunson with the Brunson window. Imagine Brunson and Randall extensions. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you something. If the Knicks don't win, or, or if the Knicks don't improve in these next uh, is it two years? Because I think Randall's contract, I think he's got, well, you know what? Let me not think. Let me just go see. Julius Randall. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So Julius has three years left. Um. Yeah, that's the window. Three years. That's what it is. It's the Julius. It's the same window. Um. For both, I believe. Oh, technically, it's two years because the fourth year is a player option. So Julius could opt out. Um. Hmm. So I guess really you could say two years. Yeah. Say two years because that that there you know that fourth year he can opt out and then renegotiate. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I think th I, this is goes back to what I said. I know there was a reason why I said that before. The Paul George thing, it makes sense for the two year window. I yeah, that's what I think. That's why I said that before. I don't remember what I was um, thinking about. I think that's why I said the two-year window. So if you can get Paul George here, right, um, and uh, you know, add another couple pieces to kind of round out the roster, see what you got, see how far the Knicks can go this year. Understanding that really the year after is the year that you like that's penciled in that we got to be able to do something in that year, you know, because this year if they were able to get him and then, you know, get a couple of other small pieces around to help build out the team for what might be missing to help towards that, like a, another shooter or something, who knows what the Knicks could do this year. Um, they might surprise some people and shock the world, or, you know, they might put themselves in a position where the following year they can go all in. This is our shot because after that, then that's when the money starts to get crazy. Paul George, you would have to re-sign him if you want to keep him. They probably wouldn't do that. Julius Randle would be asking for a new contract because he already took the discount. He did the Knicks a favor. Now he's going to want to get paid, paid. And you don't know if you're going to want to pay Julius Randle that type of money. At that point, you might say, now it's time to move on. So, yeah, I think the Knicks got that two-year window. That's what I said before. Plus, Tibbs is in going into the fourth year of his five-year contract. So he's left 
He's got two years left on his contract. It all makes sense. It's a two-year window to me. So that's what I think, guys. I think don't be surprised, and this is how you start to judge things. If the Knicks are thinking the same way, it's a two-year window, so don't be surprised that they get really aggressive. They may not do it this year. They may – I mean, they who, who knows? Getting Paul George is aggressive. But they may not go too crazy and see how this year plays out. You know, they might get a Paul George in here. But next year, you might see the Knicks do some all chips in like what we did with Carmelo was here when we went out and got uh, – we had Jason Kidd and uh, we had um, uh, Rasheed Wallace – and we just started trying to put everybody that we could get on the team just to see what we can do. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I hope they wouldn't go too crazy, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did that, if that's the, if that's the window. Like, everybody's – after this, the whole team's going to be shaking up. Tibbs might be out of here. Randall might be out of here. Paul George, if he was here, he might be out of – you know what I mean? So you, I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's all saying if we had Paul George, of course. Um. Um, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I wonder. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it when we get there. Um, all right, so. Jarrell Williams is in the building. Salute. Appreciate you. He said the only person uh, getting a max is Brunson and an all-star that's in another on another team. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why this whole thing makes sense. Because I think after two years, two more years of Julius here, after that, if we haven't won anything or we're not significantly better, I think the Knicks don't bring Julius back. I think he opts out and he goes elsewhere. And he's going to get paid somewhere uh, well hold on let me see something uh, 22 23 Julius and Let's see. Julius Randle. No. No, he did. He did. Gerald, uh, I'm Geraldine. Uh, he did Margaret. He he did uh, do the Knicks a favor. Now, I see what you're saying. Like, he took the money because he, you know, he he was betting on himself and still didn't necessarily know he wanted to make sure he was locked into a contract and was able to start getting paid. But what I'm saying, when I say he did the Knicks a favor, remember when Julius came here, um, I think he signed the two year, was a two year, um, $18 million deal, something like that. And he wanted to be a part of the Knicks, but he wanted them to get better. Right. And he only had, there wasn't a lot of people here. It was Julius and RJ and then whoever else we had here. And, you know, the, one of the Morris brothers, Marcus, um, he was trying to get the Knicks respectable and, and to the point where other uh, players would want to join him here. Cause remember nobody was coming to the Knicks. So he was trying to bring other people with him. So he was also, not only was he signing the contract and locking, locking in so he can start getting paid some good money. He also was trying to be flexible for them. Cause remember the Knicks were trying to, you know, uh, uh, resituate their cap situation and acquire assets um, so that they could make a move for a big splash. And I'm sure that's how they sold it to Julius too. Listen, we're trying to get some good players here. We want to get the draft assets. We want to have uh, cap flexibility. So we want you here, but we also want to build a winner around you. I'm sure that's how they, they pitched it to him. So, yeah, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, that he definitely he was going to get his money. and He didn't necessarily know. It was a little uncertainty there. But he was definitely also – his market value wasn't what he got. 
he could have got more just for the type of player he was. I mean, he had um, <clears throat> when he came from uh, New Orleans, he had 20. He was averaging 21 points and 8.7 rebounds uh, and three assists. He could have got more money than than the 18, you know, mil uh, per year. He could have got a little higher. He, he settled for the 18. That's fine. So then when he it was time to negotiate his contract, uh, he in 2020, so the first year of the contract kicked in was 2022-23, right? So he was making $23 million base salary. In his 2020-21 year, he averaged 24 points and 10 rebounds with six assists. <clears throat> And he had, I believe he had just uh, signed the contract during that year, that period. I, I think it's a discount. I think he could have got more money. And even if you want to say, well, it, the, it's it, it actually the contract got signed in the previous offseason right before the season started, he averaged 19.5 and 9.7 rebounds and three assists uh, on 46% shooting from the field uh so he still he still his market value wasn't the 116 million for four-year deal that he got he still could have got more money than that so yeah i mean i i i, I understand what you mean though margaret but i think he i think he worked with the knicks the knicks he was happy to take the money that they were giving him but he he they worked together on that Um, all right, where was I? <laughs> okay, let me do a couple more, hit the intro, and then we'll get into the regularly scheduled programming. Uh, all right, Nick's won today. Salute, <laughs> he's yeah, the Jalen Martin Hive is here. Uh, hey, what up, 713? I'm my guy, Flame. What's good, brother? Appreciate you. Uh, Vaughn Allen is in the building. Needless to say, I'm quite impressed with Jay Toppin. Yeah, okay, okay. I see you, Vaughn Allen. Jeremy says the Knicks' horrible bosses' malpractice continues. I got you. I got you. Hidalgo Soul is in the building. Knicks just going to run it back. Could be. Could be. Hey, DSJ is in the building. Uh, let me start this question. I'm going to hold on to that. We'll get back to it. Good to see you, my brother. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So, yeah, then, uh, then, yeah. So, I am right that it was the off season of um, going into 2020, 21, where he signed the new, the new deal, and so he played, he balled out. So, I mean, you know, all right. Uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Oh, wow, you must be in the in the in, in the meeting room. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, okay, I mean maybe that's the case. Sure, when I don't know. Uh, but I also know. I mean, Julius said. If you remember what Julius was saying when he got here, he wanted the to the to you know build the Knicks back up. He wanted them to be a winner, and he wanted other people to come here. So I mean, if you're taking uh, a big contract and the Knicks are still trying to piece it together and you don't li leave them much flexibility. How are they going to surround you with other people? I'm not saying that um, players leave any money on the table, but sometimes they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. G Robinson is in the building. Salute. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, well, no, nah, I don't believe that G Robinson now, because we've seen more of Julius Randall and, and, you know, there's been a couple of things that uh, emotionally have drawn question marks for certain people. I get it, but mm -mm, that most improved player season, people were looking at Julius Randall, believe that. Uh, 
Um, hmm, let me see. Yeah. Okay. I'm not bugging. I think that's. I mean, that's how I kind of remember it. So Jeremy Nussbaum says Julius Randle's first contract with the Knicks, three years, sixty-three million, which is what DSJ said. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Julius Randle left substantial money on the table for the Knicks to sign Evan Fournier, Derrick Rose, Nerlens Noel, and Kimba Walker. That, that makes sense to me. Uh. Uh-huh. I see what you're saying, Francisco. Getting his brother seems to say they're still with him. To me, Randall Fournier and Rose got to go. Interesting. Shaw Legacy in the building. Salute. What's good? He said, if we don't get better in two years, it will be because the front office sat on their hands and squeezed the life out of an incomplete roster. Mm, bars. That's real. Thank you for the generous super chat, man. Appreciate you, bro. S and D, the art man. Uh, Tibbs is the Knicks' biggest helper and herder. Got the guys to buy in, but is so rigid that the guys who's been here are stuck with no real improvement. Another coach finds a way to play Obi and Randall. <sighs> so I agree with you and I disagree with you only because I think what makes it difficult is Obi's limitations. If Obi, if Obi's game was a little different and we could use Obi in the small forward role comfortably, then we would have no issue here. But Obi's in, uh, uh, he's an in betweener, but he just doesn't have the overall game that supports the small forward position. He's too short to play center. Randall's not really big enough to play center. I mean, he's big enough, but you know what I mean? Like size-wise, length-wise, he's not tall enough to play center. We're kind of like, you know, we're in that in-between uh, moment here. It's tough. It's tough. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It's a shame, though. I, I I do feel bad. It's it's just the circumstances. Like we we boxed ourselves into a corner. You guys all know the story. It hasn't changed, and it, it's still the makeup of why we're here right now dealing with this. Julius Randle wasn't supposed to be here when we drafted Obi. Like they were supposed to move on from Julius Randle, but Julius Randle balled out. So. That's a problem. Like we weren't expecting that. Not nobody was anticipating that. And because of that, we're in this situation where now Julius is a as a mainstay on the team, and he has played really good for us, especially this past year. And then you got a guy like Obi, who's never really gotten a true shot to show what he can do out there and be comfortable learning out there and 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 improving, playing top talent, playing against the best guys every night. Um, and getting a substantial amount of minutes so he can learn and grow and improve on his game. It's a shame for Obi. It is. And I, I've, I said this last year. I, I, uh, you know, I think they should trade Obi. I think they should trade him because it'll be better for him so he can go somewhere else, learn how to, uh, you know, be a starter in this league consistently. And I think he'll be good. It'll have to be the right situation. But I think Obi's not a bad player. It's just he's behind Julius Randle. It just it don't make no sense. And you know Julius is a is a dog out there. He 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 plays a lot of minutes. He usually is very healthy. Like that's that's you know it's a tough guy to to be playing behind. Like I don't. There's no other way to put it. <clears throat> JJ's in the building. Salute. What's good, my brother? Hope you're doing well. Our Mets stink. I'm not even talking about it. I don't want to deal with it, brother. I don't. I don't know. Then all these stupid trades are coming out. I'm not sure. Look, I don't care how. I'd rather stink this whole year than wind up making a bad trade and trading our farm system, our whole farm system, for one guy who is not going to make it. That goes back to the whole thing. Like you bring in Otani, he's a good hitter, a really good pitcher. The, the Mets need more than that. 
that's not so you're going to trade your whole farm system then be with this guy and then you're still losing because you don't have enough to turn the team around because you stink at other places too no not doing it that's me uh if i can't sign him out right then let him let him go somewhere else and, and be miserable somewhere else <laughs> Danny Landis is in the building. He said, good afternoon, Big Ron. Happy Saturday, bro. We need to make a big move. We just don't have enough to go all the way. Please wake up Leon Rose. Well, yeah. I Look, I, I'm on the belief that it's not about the big move. It's about the right moves. Moves with an S. Doesn't have to be the big move. It's got to be the right moves. Uh, my guy, Meeks fans, Brazil. What's good, Victor? I hope you're doing well, brother. Good to see you. <clears throat> Shada G is in the building. Uh, so I'm a huge Nick fans, but Nick fans and the owner is the thing. Everybody would like to buy a new house, or a car, not a used one. They wait until the next team build up a player, then want them. True, true. And I'm going to talk about something in reference to this in a minute. Uh, somewhat similar, but a little different. Uh, Gideon, what up, G Money? Salute, appreciate you, my brother. He said, I know this won't happen, but my dream starting five would be Jalen Brunson, Quentin, uh, Michael Porter, Julius Randle, and Miles. Tor Man, you're really on this Michael Porter wave, huh? Uh, not concerned about his back issues at all. That they might, you know, the more usage he gets, the more time he'll be out there, that the back issue could start flaring up, and then that's when you'll see the concerns that a lot of NBA teams have had about him. I'm just asking because it concerns me a little bit. Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> PH, what's good? Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you're doing all right. Um, and unfortunately, I got no news to tell you about uh, you know, our guy Kai Soto. I have no clue what's going on. I don't know how the workouts went. I don't know who has extended a summer league invite to him. I know the Dallas Mavericks said that they definitely liked his workout, but I'm not sure if the if he actually got extended a summer league invite. I mean, honestly, the Knicks got nobody on their summer league that I really know. Like, I'm, they don't have a bunch of players. So, to me, they should definitely be extending Kai Soto an invite to the Summer League. I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know what's happening over there. So, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. Um, let me see here. Hey, oh, thank you for another generous super chat. S&D, the art man, I appreciate you, man. He said... They made him into a small forward. They stuck him in the corner, made him a three-point shooter who cuts and dunks. His defense has come a long way. It's gotten better. <clears throat> it's definitely gotten better. Uh, I'd love to see a little bit more, though. Okay. Uh, I'd love to see. I don't want to, you know, get into the whole time, but we're going to get into it when we start talking about Jacob. Uh Bad Mojo 1860. What's good? Salute to you. Thank you. Yes. What happened to positionless basketball? Well, I think the 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 positionless basketball people are no longer here. Remember, the positionless basketball thing came from Steve Mills and Scott Perry when they were doing press conferences. They were saying, This is what we're trying to do. They had Fisdale buy into it, and he was coming with that too. But Fisdale's gone. Steve Mills is not in a position of in well i'm not gonna say that he probably still has some influence with the knicks but he's not in a position of power on the uh front office staff if you will and scott perry is no longer here so the people who really believed in this whole positionless basketball aren't around so i guess that's what happened to it Allah wise is in the building what team ob starting on Maybe the Pacers? <laughs> Not a lot of teams out there that Obi could start on because those teams do have um, players that are ahead of him. And then some of these young teams 
have been bad for a while that they've drafted certain talent that fits into the position that OB would play. So it's not necessarily a given. OB could fight and win a starting job over time. He could play better than some of these guys and maybe get, but that's what OB has to do. My whole thing about OB is not just about the opportunity that he's not getting. It's about what he can do with any opportunity that he does get. He's got to go out there and ball. Like he's got to be dominant or aggressive in a certain way. Like Obi's got to come down. <clears throat> I said this before. Obi has to be coming down the court and the opposing team has to be like, be careful, cut him off. Don't let him get to his one step because he could dunk on us. Like that's how Obi has to be. And he's not that. He is not that. I've seen a lot of dunkers in the NBA, the Sean Kemp's, the, uh, Corey McGettys, the J.R. Riders. I mean, you guys know, and I'm, I'm mentioning guy. Well, Sean Kemp was different. Sean Kemp was a, a much better player. But I'm trying to mention the guys that are really more known for dunking and not much else because they knew that in their game, this is what I do. So I got to go do this. You know what I mean? You're not expecting me to, to knock down a bunch of threes and take you guys out the game. You're expecting me. I could hit an outside shot, but if you give me that step, it's a highlight. You don't want to be put on the poster. That is what I need from OB. OB, who a guy who wins the dunk competition, who's known for his athleticism, does not do that. He is not like the typical dunker. He does fantastic dunks on fast breaks by himself, but he doesn't. He doesn't show. He doesn't put fear in the defenders. Like oh, I gotta guard Gobi. I um, mean, you know, OB. Like I don't know what he's gonna do, man. You know, if I let him go right. Oh, it's going to be Christmas. It's over. <laughs> no, I don't think they feel that way. That's the problem. And that's how they need to feel. Obi just got to keep working and he's got to go aggressive. I'd rather see Obi go all out, full tilt, and, and, and give me, like, you know, in 12 minutes of basketball, give me, uh, you know, uh, impressive layup or a dunk on somebody, maybe a little mid-range jumper, and 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 you know show that that grit with his time because that puts fear in the defense. That makes the defense like, oh, what's going on with this guy? Why is he he's super aggressive right now? I ain't trying to get on a poster. Like you know, you put that in the back of a defender's mind. Now they kind of the the main focus should be the guy on the right. Now like they cheating like. Okay, Obi's coming my way. I, am I gonna move out the way, or what am I gonna do? I gotta stop him here because, <laughs> you know, that's that's what I'm saying. But whatever, that's a whole other subject. All right, so um, let me just go through these last people real quick to say what's up. Uh, thank thank you for got um you know tuning in, guys. Smash that like button as always. Appreciate you. Uh, looking good doing it is here. Appreciate you. There's no offensive schemes. Nick's on and. Um, Nick's an uh, assistant coach. Nick's basically, I guess what you're trying to say is the Knicks need an assistant coach for offense. We wouldn't be in this position in the first place, man. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, SND, the art man. Thank you for the generous super chat. Once again, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, he said the real problem is you can't play OB, RJ, Randall, and Mitch. If RJ was a better shooter, or becomes one, Obi would and can be able to play in that lineup, right? Because there'd be more floor spacing. But when RJ's not shooting well, he's clogging the lane. Julius, if he's not necessarily going well and he's clogging the lane, um, and Mitch is clogging the lane because he can't stretch the floor. I see what you're saying. I, I get it. That's but once again, it goes back to one, you're here playing behind Randall. Two, you're in a Nick system where we don't have a lot of good shooting, so we don't space the floor properly. And three, it's a Tom Thibodeau coach team, so the offensive plays are not that sophisticated. Uh, there's not a lot of back cut screens and lanes for a slasher like Obi to really benefit from. I just said a lot of things that don't work for Obi here. But I hear you, brother. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's right. Can't forget about Isaiah Roby. We still got him. We got to see what he's about. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy said Tom Thibodeau would demolish Michael Porter Jr. I hear you. All right. The public enemy number one is in the building. Uh, he says y'all bash every player who, uh, who, uh, talked about the Knicks after they left. You heard Obi arguing with Thibodeau, but yet Tibbs is a good coach. Our front office is doing a super job. 
Mm. We'll get into that. Appreciate you, Deep Public Enemy. Always good to see you. Oh, no. Oh, don't tell me that. Oh, no. Damn. Well, you know, once again, I don't know what the Knicks do. The Knicks don't care about this stuff. I honestly don't think they care about this stuff. And I think the Knicks, I, I've always said this before. Sometimes I feel like the Knicks put themselves in a position. I felt like this in Tibbs, Thibodeau's first year. I'd be feeling like Tibbs don't want to play certain players because if he plays certain players and they look better than the guys he's got out there on the court, it's going to start the buzz and then the fans are going to start, you know, uh, creating the uh, the uproar and it puts more pressure on him and it puts a battery in the players back and then he winds up having to do something that he didn't want to do. I was saying that before when we had Kemba and Fournier and there was other guys that needed playing time. And he's like, I'm, he's playing these guys. And I know that if he knows what's going on in practice, if he starts playing these other young guys, they're going to outplay these, these guys. And, and, and then there's going to be an issue. Although Kemba, when healthy, was still a very uh, talented, good player for the Knicks on offense. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Damn it, man. Good for Kai, man. Damn, that sucks. I you telling me the Knicks couldn't at least give this guy an invite to the summer league? He could still sign with anybody after the summer league's over. You don't at least want to have him on the roster, take a look at him. Man, these Knicks, man, piss me off. Disgusting. Whatever. I can't I can't with them. It's upsetting. That's a good question. Okay. You got, damn it, Sean Kearns, you got me one more before I get into the intro and get into the rest of the stuff. Here's the thing. So, as a fan on the outside looking in, we're going to, we, this is what we're going to look at because, you know, this is what it looks like to us. I hear you. Why are the Knicks giving up first-round picks to move talent or move off of players and these other teams are using second-round picks and getting the same job done? <clears throat> it's because now that we understand a lot more about this new C CBA agreement, <clears throat> excuse me, teams are scared and do not want to be caught with some of these contracts for certain players um, because of the new CBA you know, that second tax apron <clears throat> that's happening where the Knicks, I mean, the Knicks, well, players will be getting charged uh, big money for for their con, uh, for the amount of uh, salary they have on the team is scaring owners. Right. <clears throat> and and plus, if your team is not a, a necessarily a contender, you're going to be paying all types of money and you're not getting the return on it. Right. If you're a contender, you might say, OK, that's fine. We'll do this because we're trying to win. And in the end, it benefits us. This is what we got to do to try to win. But these teams that are really making these starting to make these trades are teams that are not ready to win. And they might be stuck because of all the money they're paying out and getting charged. That second tax apron is killer, apparently. And people and teams do not want to pay it. So what they're doing is they're sacrificing. So some of these trades, some of these players are going for a lot less than they would normally command because they just want to get them off the team so they can save some money now and they can be below so they won't have to worry about that second tax apron. The first tax apron is going to hit a lot of teams because that's normal. It's the second one that apparently is is what's um, making ownership around the league very worried. <laughs> so that's what's happening. You're going to see some players get moved around and go for cheaper than you would expect. And that's part of the reason why, you know, people have been talking about Paul George with the Clippers or, or some other player because you might be able to get them. Like, look, look at what Bradley Beal went for. It's because, of you know, Bradley Beal, it, obviously you notice that these, these players make a lot of money. So this won't happen to the average player. This is to the people who make the big money. So even, uh, you know, you could see yourself in the same situation with Damian Lillard. Uh, with Portland, because Damian Lillard's making like sixty million, he would be the type of player that could get moved for a little less than you would expect as well. You just never know. 
So I hope that helps you understand it. I can't get into the particulars of the, the aprons and what the charges are and all that stuff. I don't necessarily, I haven't looked at it myself. So, but I just understand what's being said and how it's being looked at around the league. The ownership does not want to get into those second tax apron spots because apparently it's not, it's not conducive <laughs> to, <laughs> to what they're trying to do. Um, okay. All right. I think that's it for now. Let's get it cracking. Let's uh, let me put the link out just so I know I I've done that. Uh, heck is my uh, there we go, there we go, and then let's hit the intro and we'll get right back into it and start chopping these whole topics down. Uh, I think I'm going to start with a topic that I wasn't planning on talking about, but we should talk about it because uh, you know what. It, it might be something to it. Oh, oh, my fault. My, I didn't know you guys were there. That's for Wiz, by the way. That's for you, Wiz. Anyway. All right. So. Tom Thibodeau. Let's start with this Zach Levine thing, right? Because this is going to lead into my Tom Thibodeau discussion. Zach Levine apparently does not want to come to the New York Knicks, or at least that's how it's being phrased. Now, I don't know if that is personally coming from Zach Levine, because it's been said two different ways, right? It's been said Zach Levine is not interested in coming to the New York Knicks. It's also been phrased Zach Levine's camp is not interested in uh, having – any players from from uh, that camp on the New York Knicks. Obviously, we know that uh, you know there's there's a uh, there's some issues there uh, because of the whole rival agency things, Rich Paul, and and you know the whole CAA thing with Leon Rose. Even though Leon Rose is not an agent anymore. Um, but there's a history there, and uh, apparently they don't like each other, or at least Rich Paul doesn't like them, um, and he doesn't want to deal with them uh, and, a, and a team that's controlled by someone who uh, he has bad dealings with or, or whatever. I don't know. But um, so he doesn't he doesn't want that relationship. My whole thing is, one, I don't know if if Levine actually said that or feels that way. I, I know the story is coming from the you know the people around his camp, which they are the decision makers. But remember, the final decision maker and the one who is responsible for everything is Zach Levine. Like I hired you guys. You guys represent me. You can tell me what your opinion is, but it's up to me whether I don't want to do that or not. Remember, you work for me. So I don't know if Zach Levine actually feels that way or not. But if he does, then I think that the Bulls and Zach Levine and his camp have been using the Knicks to try to help promote and create leverage or, or drive up the price and, and show some, uh, uh, some interest so that, you know, you can create the buzz and the market for Levine. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what the hell's going on here. First off, if you ask me, just looking around the league, where the hell would Zach Levine go? Where would he go? He wants to win a championship. Okay, where are you going? 
Where are you going where they need you on that team and you will help them win a championship? There's not many places because those places already have somebody in your position. Maybe a team that I could say might be able to use Zach Levine, but I don't know if that is their biggest concern. No. I mean, maybe. Maybe Dallas? Could Luca be at the small forward position? Luca's got the height. Could Luca play the small forward position for them um, and still be the facilitator and do what he does on the offensive side, but on the defense? Or will he get cooked by small forwards? I don't know. He gets cooked anyway on defense. So it doesn't really matter. I don't know. But. You know, if the if the Dallas has the money, which I don't think they have a lot of money, but if they had the money, I guess no, I don't know. They can't, I don't even know. I don't think they can do it. But maybe. I guess they got a couple pieces they can move off of, but I still think they they would be lacking a lot over there in Dallas. They would have a great point guard, a really good shooting guard, and a great small forward. So you'd have Kyrie Irving, Zach Levine. And Luka Doncic, which is not bad, guys. There's nothing to sneeze over. But the, the Dallas got a lot of other issues they're dealing with over there, too. So is that enough? Would they be willing to go all in that way? I don't know. But other teams, where, where are you going to go, Zach? Where are you going to get the money that you want and have a chance to win a championship right now? Like this year, right now. I guess you could go to... No. I don't think so. I was going to say I, maybe you can go somewhere like um, Miami. I mean, I guess you could go to Miami. I don't know how Tyler Hero would feel about that, but I guess. I guess you can go to Miami. Maybe that's it. Maybe Ty, my, maybe Miami is the is the spot, and maybe that's what he he's holding out for because you got a team that – uh, obviously is better than most people expected, I guess. I thought they were always good, but they just underachieved most of the season. Um, you got uh, Miami is an area where I don't I don't think they – do they deal with the state tax over there in Miami? I don't think they do. I don't remember. Um, it's beautiful weather. Everybody wants to be in Miami apparently, so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't know where he would go. But I just think that um, I think they're just using as, as what everybody that I, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago, you know, I'm always talking about how teams are trying to use the Knicks to drive up the price and create that interest. And, and the Bulls and, and Whatever, Zach Levine and his agency are no different. Now when it starts to get serious, now when the, the Knicks are actually reaching out, trying to see what this is all about and if something could happen, and you've had talks before, those talks before, I mean, why are you having the talks if your agency doesn't want to have anything to do with the Knicks or doesn't want any of their players, any of their players coming to the Knicks? Why would you even have those talks? That's not something that happened overnight. That's something that's been there. Rich Paul didn't like CAA for a minute. So wh why all of why are you even having the conversations? But I'm saying it's all a rat race. It's a game, and people get sucked into it. And then they try to they try to create that media thing for it, create the buzz, and then now we have to talk about it, <laughs> even though nothing's coming from it. You know, I just settled into the fact that damn it, you're healthier than I thought, Zach. Okay, so I wouldn't mind having you on the team. Now I hear this all all this other crap. Uh, whatever. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Let me get my guy in here. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still laughing for my dad's moves. From the <laughs> dance moves. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I really missed up some honey juice. So I'm on the 101, <laughs> going to the 405. Then I got to jump off. So I said, let me jump on while I can. Yeah. I just stop laughing. Okay. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, bro? 
man. I'm good, man. How you doing, man? How, how's the family? How's the wife? Every, everybody's the same. Can't complain. We, we're just doing what uh, we can do, man. We, yeah. Send our best. Send our best to all the family, man. Uh, Appreciate it, man. Same to you and yours. Thank you. Now, I actually also was laughing because I was the like, same boat as you. I just accepted Levine's health status. So, okay, you know what? Yeah, okay, I'll take Levine. And then he dissed us like that. I'm like, damn. If I see that, you know boy, I mean? him. it takes a lot for me to change my mind, and 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 Sean Money actually got me to change my mind about Levine, and then this. Come on, man! Exactly. Oh man, I'm so frustrated. And then, of course, I don't want to get into Kai Soda. I'm like Kai, we can't. I mean, the guys. He's you know in the Philippines. You know what ten dollars mm -hmm. get you in the Philippines? You mm. know you can live with with a you know. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, I do. I, I, I be, I'm, I'm such a homebody the, 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 into the mind of me. I'm always watching these videos about living in the Philippines, and I'm looking at people shopping for condos, and I'm, I watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, we could have just said, Kai, you know, let's go out on the table a little move. We're not going to pay the full amount, even though we can't be that cheap, but he'd be like, yo, I'll take I'll take 10 grand and show up at the summer camp. Come on, man, just get me there. Just, jeez, mm. I couldn't believe really, I couldn't just, I mean, a simple move like that. I mean, I'm still recovering from the um, from the non-draft. Second year in a row, oh, no draft picks in the first round. And one or two years, only one draft pick second round with Trevor Keels trying to get slim, I guess, and taller, apparently. Right. Allegedly. Right. When they yes. said, by the way, when they said um, that RJ grew two inches, it was two inches around the waist. He didn't get a little bulky. That was a two inches. <laughs> 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 oh, like I'm like, RJ, RJ, you're not trying to get there yet, man. Wait till you're 50 or 60. I, I, can add the extra two. I hope he slims down, bro. Well, that's a side note. I hope yes. RJ gets into a nice training program this year, cuts some of that weight, tries to lower the body fat, and continues to work and see if he can get a little quicker out there. Um, and then work on other things that I've, I've said in the past that he needs to work on with his game. But that's a whole other story. Um, let me see. Uh, Wiz, you still there? Uh, he's driving, so he may be going through. But while he's while he's getting back to us, uh, shout out to Ribby. Uh, salute. What's good? Appreciate you, brother. Good to see you out here. Um, RD Barn is in the building. Uh, he said exactly right. The agency works for the players, not the other way around. Facts. I don't know what the hell's going on here. How how, how they 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 telling us stories about what the agency wants? Forget the agency. I hired you. <laughs> I don't I don't get it. But whatever. Um, uh yeah okay i think uh wiz is out there lost in the in 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 the dead spots out there hopefully he's good um and just moving to another location uh ribby appreciate you as i said uh let me see here ron samiento in the building appreciate you good to see you jonathan green is here Okay, that's actually, okay, that's a possibility. Jonathan Green says if Milwaukee Bucks don't sign Chris Middleton, Zach Levine might have a spot over there. That makes sense. Okay, I, I, I got you. Um, Jay from PR is in the building. He said no state tax in Florida. Yeah, and thank you guys for for uh, for uh, saying that. Shop Powers, thank you as well. Um, uh, let me see here. Ah, Knicks will be 2026 NBA champs is in the building. What's good? Good to see you as always. Appreciate you, my brother. Um, all right. Let me get my other guy in here. G Money. What's, what's cracking slacking? Happy Sabbath. Happy Saturday. How you guys doing? Chilling, chilling. Always good to see you, brother. Nice, nice, nice. Um, uh, let me see here. Yeah, the Knicks payroll is now 175 million. <laughs> yeah, Woo nice. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm on this whole thing, right? There's two things I want to discuss real quick. Uh, and shout out to oh well, Samuel Cortez. Thank you for being here. I don't know if I've seen you in the chat before. Maybe you've been here. If this is your first time, 
Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. Still Nick fans. Appreciate you. Um, and if you're returning, then thanks for coming back. Thank, thank you for being here. Let me get Wiz back in here. Wiz, how are you doing? Yeah, Chance, yeah, I had to get take that call from the my wife's best friend. Oh, okay. No, no, I was just hoping. I was like, maybe he went through a dead spot That's or something while he's driving. Man. Yes, man. Yes, man. Um, so yes. let me ask you guys this, right? So obviously, you know, I feel I'm feeling very like uh, bothered by this whole <laughs> finally feeling accepting Zach Levine and then I hear this stuff come out I'm like you that you dirty dog like I don't I don't want to deal with this right okay so but you know I've, I've said for for weeks now this is all par for the course we know these players are all going to try to use the Knicks for leverage or to create buzz mm -hmm. to drive up value all that stuff because the Knicks are now a team that people are looking at a little bit more at least they've they've justified some of this because they are a good team now they have made the playoffs so you, it's it's respectable it's not just oh because in the past they used to do it and Knicks stunk and they still use the Knicks name which is crazy right yeah. but the other thing is Outside of whatever CAA stuff is going on with Rich Paul and CAA, whatever issues they have, which that's a big issue to me, to be honest, because Rich Paul represents a good amount of people. Um, and if that is true, that's not good. And honestly, I don't think that's um, – I don't even think – you would have to prove it, but I don't think that's actually a legitimate practice for the NBA. You know, an agency that represents NBA players can't not want to deal with a certain team in the NBA. They, they, they can't, that can't be the case. I don't think that's uh, for um, um, competitive balance in the league. I think there's something wrong with that. I think that would be something that um, the commissioner would have to look into. And if I was the Knicks, I would be doing something. I'm, I'm spiteful like that. I'd be like, I'm petty. Uh, listen, Kamish. I think there's something going on with Rich Paul. I think he's deliberately not allowing any of his uh, clients to deal with our team. I'd, I'd, I'd open up the investigation into that because I'm petty. But whatever. Besides the point. The I other thing that's up. been going around, um, and it's it started, like we've heard it before, but we heard it also during the middle of the season around the trade deadline. And then we find out that they did this secretive poll throughout NBA players asking them different questions around the league about certain things. And then uh, one of the questions was, who is the coach in the NBA that you'd least like to play for? And apparently <laughs> Tom Thibodeau won with like 43% of the vote or something crazy like that. A lot of players do not want to play for Coach Tibbs. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel, uh, G Money? What are you thinking about that? Wow, that's, that's crazy. I look at both sides here. I do agree that Tom Thibodeau can be a little bit stubborn and can be a little bit ignorant in certain things going on in the court with certain rotations that, could, that they could fix a little bit. At the same time, he is a coach that did turn around certain franchises, like the Timberwolves. The Wolves missed the playoffs from, what, 05 to 2017, like, what, 13 years in a row? And you get Tibbs and you make the playoffs, though. And then, remember, the Knicks – I mean, New York missed the playoffs, what, seven years in a row? And we get Tibbs, and they ran the playoffs two out of three years, though. Look, I know Tom Thibodeau can be a little bit stubborn with rotations. There's times he could play certain guys here and there. His office can be a little bit wonky. He's still a great defensive coach. And then make some players better, like Julius Randle. He made Julius Randle better. I mean, he made Jimmy Butler. I know Jimmy Butler's better now, but I'm saying he made Jimmy Butler on the uprise a little bit when he was in Chicago. So I don't think Tibbs is the most hated. I don't think Tibbs should be the most hated coach in the NBA right now. There's, there's worse coaches. If there's a coach that I would not want to play for, I mean, at the time, David Fisdale. At the time, um, Igor Kokoshkov. I mean, I would not I would not really play with Rance Unsell, the coach in the, who's the coach of the Wizards, because they don't meet the right rotations, man. Yeah, those are this worst coaches I would not want to play for. Play for. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, what do you think, Wiz? How, how you feel? You think uh, Tibbs is a horrible coach to play for, and <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. But well, Tibbs is stubborn. I, I Tibbs mean, is stubborn. I agree with that. Right. I mean, the, the, but the, the question is not necessarily 
you don't want to play for him, but who do you least like to play for? Which justifiably can be a scenario where someone says um, his communication skills, for example, the way he communicates the players or certain players, that's something that if you don't have to deal with that, it may be an option. Winning or losing, um, not necessarily the biggest factor, but also the fact of time management with, with, with my play on the, team, on, the, on, the, on the court. Just like I think the OB blow up. In some ways, Obi could have blown up, and I think if I was Obi, I blew up on that on that game, and I would actually blow up trying to protect Randall, saying he's hurt, and you're telling me you couldn't give give him a chance to just take a little break to recover. I mean, not just my playing mm-hmm. time, because it sounds a little selfish, but in that aspect, where you've seen the scenarios where Tibbs kind of forgets a player's put in, you know, four to five minutes in the game. And he's just like, I ah, no, no, he, he'll be okay. He's a pro. He's an athlete. He's a professional. He's young. I'm like, man, we know that, but everybody needs a little break sometimes. And so he mm-hmm. will overplay you. And that could be a factor where people are thinking about that as well. Um, not necessarily he's a bad coach, but that those factors that cause your game to be just a little bit off because the coach don't talk or communicate very well. Or two, he doesn't rotate you off the floor. I kind of like wants the old school fight through it, you know, put up, you know, just put a bandaid on it. It's a broken leg, okay, put two bandaids. You know what I mean? Mm. You were breaking up a little bit towards that last part with the bre- the the two bandaids. What were you yeah. saying? Oh, Tibbs has got you. He's locking you down. We he ain't letting you speak, Wiz. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you you and uh. I'm breaking up. Yeah, I'm on the four or five. Oh no, but now yeah. you sound okay. Um, I hear you now. I hear you now. Exactly. I just passed it. Just passed it in the four or five zone. Um. Yeah. So he's the kind of guy who says, you know, like, yeah, just let's put some rub some dirt into that cut, and you'll be okay. You know, the kind of mm. old school. And that could be a factor when people think he's so old school in the start process that if I had a choice, I'd rather play with. You know, I'm more, I'm more modern coach who understands. You know. Play himself. Like he doesn't believe in you know load management. I think load management is not my favorite concept either. But there are aspects to resting your players when necessary in order to preserve them for the future. And, mm. and he doesn't believe that every game is a is a final game seven final to him. And that's one of my concerns about the way he coaches. And unfortunately, that sometimes sacrifices the future. And in some cases. It has to sacrifice play itself because he did get RJ hurt last year when he had like two minutes left, and we, the difference is a twenty-point game or twenty-point game, and he left him in there when everybody was out. It was like, oh, RJ is young; he needs to work. But, and he got he got he twisted his ankle or something. It wasn't a bad injury, but it was still what kind of what something worse could have happened. So it was questionable. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I don't yep. want any more factors to put into why someone doesn't want to play with the Knicks. So it does concern me, and if coach, coach, the coach we disliked or least liked is another factor to cause him not to want to be here, besides the high New York City taxes, you know, besides the glare of the media and the fans that sometimes may be a little bit, you know, intrusive, let's give him nothing else. And I don't, I think that we want him if it's correct. Okay. Okay. Sure. I mean, you know, I'm just, I, you know, these players, I don't know what it is. Don't get me wrong. I don't, you know, you know how I feel about Tibbs. I respect him as a coach. I think he's a smart mind. I think mm-hmm. part of what he does is brilliant, but he's also old school. He's also stubborn. He also mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily see the big picture sometimes. So there's that when you think about him, but you also can't, turn off the fact that, you know, it's time with the Knicks has turned the Knicks around. The Knicks are a better team now sure. than they have been. Like, the Knicks have gone to the playoffs two of the last three seasons. The mm-hmm. Knicks do look like they're actually going in the right direction. Now, I'm not saying um, everything he does is right. You guys know uh, Tibbs is a, uh, you know, <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, I just my whole thing is like, look, 
if you're a player in the NBA, what do you want out of this experience? You want to make money. It's your job first, right? And then you want to win, right? So if you're on a good team, that's one thing. If, you, if you're being coached by, I don't know, some of the good coaches in the league, Tyron Liu, uh, uh, Eric Spolstra, uh, it's tough because you know coaches kind of go up and down with who you think is good. I would I would have thought Budenholzer was okay, but you know he's out of a job. Like you, know, if you're coached by one of these good coaches, Steve Kerr or whoever it may be, I can understand you saying I don't want to play for Tom Thibodeau. You know I know what being coached by a good coach looks like. I really like the feel over here. This is cool. I like what we got going on. I'm good. Not everybody's coached by those guys. There's a lot of guys on teams not coached by a good coach that aren't winning consistently, that aren't really doing much. They might be making some decent money, but what else are you getting out of it? So you tell them you don't want to win or you tell them you don't want to work because Tibbs is also known for pushing people and making them work. And in some cases, making them better. You want to, I mean, there's been a lot of narratives about Tibbs that I agree with, but then there's some that have changed. He's gotten a little better with it in cases, but it has to be the right player. Can he run a player into the ground because of his usage? Yes, he can. But that's why Tibbs needs the right type of players, the type of players that can play, that, uh, you know, put me out there. I'm ready any anytime you need me. I'll play the whole game if you want, coach. Those are the type of players that Tibbs needs. So if you're not that type of player, I can understand why you don't want to play for Tibbs. You don't have that in you. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's really good players that aren't like that. But a guy like Julius Randle is like that. Josh Hart has already said, yeah, I'll play 48 minutes if they need me to. He's like that. Jalen Brunson, no problem. I'll play the whole game. There's guys like that. And those guys usually benefit from playing under a Tibbs because he will find ways to make you look good. Just those guys. He doesn't make everybody look good. But, uh, you know, but uh, I, I get it. I'm just saying, like, you know, there's, 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 it's, 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 it's not as clear cut like, oh, Tibbs is just not the guy to play for and he doesn't do anything for you. We, you have to, I would say you got to give Tibbs an opportunity to have a really good roster and then you can say, oh, well, Tibbs, look what we gave Tibbs. And look what he did with them. Now you can say, oh, no, no, he's not the coach. That's all I'm saying. He's starting to get a good team under him. So now the expectations is raising. But before, like the toughest stuff that the Knicks had, that Tibbs had the coach that first year. We're right back. Come on, man. Yeah, no problem, brother. I'm, I'm just saying we need to, as much as we all kind of on the fence about him sometimes, we also got to understand who he's working with, who he's got out there. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But it is what it is. I think. They, they also don't like the fact that, I got to tell you, it, it goes back to sometimes I think Tibbs may get caught up in some of his old ways, too, as, as far as how he deals with players, the actual talking. Because if he's not making you feel comfortable, it may not be public, but there's a lot of stuff going on behind closed doors. These players see each other at games, after games, they, they hang out, they go to outside events. They're talking like, yo, Tibbs is crazy, man. Yo, he, he, this dude's wild. You, you, met, you know what he made us do? And then I try to talk to him. You know what he told me? You know, <laughs> so that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah was what you gonna say? The offensive aspect of creativity, the offensive creativity. Most of these players, most players, put your newer players these days, uh, think the offense first, right? They're thinking scoring. Most of them are thinking, I gotta have a, I gotta show my stuff. But Tibbs does want to keep you within a certain scope. Because I've watched, like, like even Obi and um, even IQ did it sometimes. And then, you know, like Obi does it between the leg dunk. He's like, I know Tim is like, ah, oh, no, don't be flashy. Or, you know, IQ did a couple of dribbles. I'm like, you know, Tim is like shaking his head like, man, just dribble the ball normal. No, don't do any of those little flashy moves. And some guys, that's just their game. Their game is a little flashier. And they need to do a certain aspect of the game. And maybe his offensive schemes... It's another factor that people go, I think we can win. Man, I just feel like I'm going to feel restricted in my ability to be, you know, play my game, fully play my game. You know, I mean, I don't want to put someone in the corner and say, stand there when you could actually be doing more. 
or I mean, again, I think he's very strict, and, and some people think overly strict. And now that he's not a good coach, but it, the strictness sometimes will have players go. I want to, I want a coach that's going to be a little bit more, open, you know, free, open, you know, like. And the fact that Jalen Brunson had to like almost make him laugh that one time, it's only the time when he made him laugh, and mm-hmm. he was like messing with him. I'm like, yo, I want come on, coach, you can lighten up sometimes. I don't think kids like that much, and that's a big factor in the work environment, whether it's a basketball court or an office. Because uh, I've 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 been I've been the manager that that wasn't having fun and I wasn't smiling, and my my team actually came back and I got a feedback from them and they're like, "Yo, you know, you can like that, man." And I'm like, "Ah, you know, you're right. You're right. I'm too tight right now." And, you know, but then there's a point where you don't want to be too loose because then people just take advantage and then go crazy. So, yes, you want some discipline, but you don't want that. You don't want to be in Marine Corps boot camp all day, you know. After boot camp, you want to drop the, drop the strings a little bit. Come on, so I drop them a little bit. And that's what I feel like. Tim is Marine Corps boot camp. He's a drill instructor. And he could just be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a sergeant even leading the squad with a little bit more flexibility. I could be, I could be, I'm just speculating of course we are, but I think those are factors that we can meditate. Yeah, I got you. Like, I'll keep Tim's by the way right now. I'm, I'm, I'll keep Tim's another year. And this this will be the year that I decide. Just like, kind of like where I am. Kind of yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we got no choice. We got to keep him for at least yeah. another year to see what, what, what we got going on here. Exactly. Yeah. And plus, you know, people don't understand how destructive – uh, a coaching change can be, um, you know, to to a a window. The Knicks are in a window, all right, of time. They're trying to do something to change Tibbs right now, and then bring in a new coach without knowing what the results are going to be and without having a really solid roster. The roster's okay, but right. a solid roster means you kind of cover all your bases. Knicks don't cover all their bases. We don't have great perimeter shooting. We still lack uh, good defense from the three area. We don't have um, the type of defense I think we need from the power forward position consistently. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you don't have that, and uh, like a, a big uh, who, uh, a center who can stretch the floor is more of a, a uh, you know, that's a gift. But if, when you don't have certain things and you don't have a backup point guard that can help facilitate and move the offense in stagnant times when your starter Jalen Brunson is resting, those are issues, man. So I don't think you can – I don't think you can just go out and bring in a new coach and give him this and say, listen, now we want you to take us to the next level. No, you need to give me some players to make sure we got the pieces. Then – you go get the coach, or you do it at the same time and go to the next. You can go to the next level that way, but you can't just infuse somebody. Now you got to learn new defensive schemes and say what you want. Outside of um, Tibbs's uh, style of play with the the defending the perimeter and uh, not close, not, you know, whatever, leaving guys open sometimes, but that could be because he doesn't have the right personnel still. Who knows? Right. Sure. Um, he's a really good defensive coach. Doesn't matter. I mean, look at what he's done with this. Look what he did with his Nick team for the past three years. He gets these guys to play defense. Um, So, you know, you got to find somebody who can come in and do some of that. And if they don't do that, then they got to be incredible offensively. And, you know, we don't know about that yet. So I don't know. I'm just saying right now is probably not the best time to make a move when it comes to tips. After this year, maybe. But right now, no, not so much. Um, I agree. I think think I'm not Totally object, would object to him playing on the Star Trek, quicker at Star Trek, and based on the development of the team at that point, then I would start to say. But and then even a, even a transition like to Johnny Bryant, where it almost seems like the same system, but tweaked with Johnny Bryant's own touch, even that change is still going to be an effect on the players. So I agree with you. I wouldn't rattle them right now. I don't think they're, they're where they need to be yet, where coaching change is going to take them. So much further than Tim is going to take them. I mean, it's possible, but I just think, yeah, let them let them ride and maintain continuity for just a little bit longer, and then you know, see how this year, and maybe even next year after, plays out, and then hey, you know, bring bring you know bring you aboard, get you on that coaching team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So 
Uh, shout out to the chat once again. Appreciate you guys. E. Gibson is in the building. Salute. Uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, he says, I question the direction of the front office as well as their overall plan. I think they're trying to build around JB and Randall, and that isn't a championship formula. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Will Salkin is in the building. What's good, Will? Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. And definitely listen to what Will says. Smash that like button, guys. We got 92 viewing. Please smash that like button. Show some love. Um Kareem Grant is in the building. Salute. What's good, twin? Good to see you as always. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we we got to see, man. We got to see what 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 happens with this whole thing. I I, I don't I don't know, uh, but I, I I just feel like the Knicks are on the right path. But they got to continue. They can't stop. They can't rest. You know what I mean? You can't just like, okay, we got it to the second, you know, round of the playoffs. Uh, we did our job. No, it doesn't stop. Front office got to keep trying to build a better team and improving. And the players got to keep executing. And Tibbs has to keep learning how to, you know, you get the best out of his players, which he knows how to get the best out of some of them. I don't know if he understands how to get the best out of all of them. Right, exactly. Oh man! Shout out to oh. Paris Duggar. Appreciate you, brother. Good to see you in the chat. I cannot believe that I missed you. Um, apparently, you showed up at the uh, NBK event, um, right? I think on for draft night. I would have loved to have uh, met you in person, my brother. So sorry I missed you. I heard. I heard Paris showed up. That's Queen. The Queen met him, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah, dope. That's yeah. dope. Um, Coach Sire is in the building. Salute to you, my brother. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well as always. Um, yeah, 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 you know. All right, so let's get this out of here. Now, something you said last, oh man, I just feel black at it about. No, go ahead. Let's go to the next, next thing. Oh, no, no. I mean, if you can't, oh, you can't remember. <laughs> exactly. I'm, like, I'm coming like you now. Man. I'm like, what did you say? Yeah, I can't remember. I can't nah, remember. It, it down. Uh, it's okay. So, I mean, listen, uh, that, that, that's the case. You know, it is what it is, man. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see where the Knicks go from here. But let's not count them out, man. There's still time. We still could make some moves. We just still, you know, still early. Still early. Very early. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Kaiser Soze. Um, where the hell is it? I just had it. Uh, I knew I should have started. I was looking at it. I was like, I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Um, so. Uh, apparently the Knicks now I don't see the official thing yet but I do know today was the decision day for them uh, but apparently the Knicks have released D Rose or intending to, to release D Rose today um, Ooh, but, but yeah but it's not it's not necessarily that D Rose is gone folks because they're just not going to be picking up his option he's due to make uh 15.6 million and you know the Knicks ain't paying 15.6 million for D Rose <laughs> also. Yeah. So yeah, they're not going to pick up that option. Um but that doesn't mean D Rose is not going to be a Nick. <clears throat> Excuse me. He could still come back at a lesser contract if he wants to or he may just decide ah, nah, I'm done, I'm out or maybe he goes to Chicago or something and retires. We don't know. But it doesn't mean he's not going to be a Nick. It just means that they're not going to be paying him that fifteen point six million dollar uh, contract, uh, you know, number for this coming year. Uh, we'll see what happens. Which I guess was part of the reason why I was thinking the, the Knicks might make a trade on draft night because they still, you know, had him under the contract and they could trade him before this this deadline came up. But you know, we're past that point now. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. That, that book from my memory. Um... That's what I was about to ask about. Um, I think Tim has a lot more input right now in the players we're getting, right? Would you agree? I, 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 it seems like it, obviously, with you know, Josh Hart. And, so with that said, and D-Rose contract that could have probably been used for a deal, 
or even mm-hmm. a few dollars spent going to the second round. Do you think that Tim just didn't see any players in the second round that he wanted, that, that he couldn't just say Dolan, you know, half, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to, to, you know, to Indiana, whoever, late, you know, late pick. Let's grab that, that four to fifth pick and let's go grab that kid. Do you think that there's, there's nobody there for Tim? I can't imagine there weren't anybody in the second round that we could have just added just for development sake for G League for the future. Uh <laughs> Paris Doug is funny. Uh I I don't know. Um I mean, Sherwin had a couple people that he really liked in the second round that he thought could have benefited the team. I there, there was a couple names out there that I saw that were looked good as well, but it really doesn't matter, guys. You know why? Because for two reasons. One, Tibbs ain't going to play these guys. And two, I honestly think the Knicks are now looking at things differently, you know, I think they have the uh, like the window that we talked about earlier. I think the Knicks have their own window. I don't know if that's the window that we mentioned, the two-year window, or if they're looking at it differently. But I really think the Knicks are done with bringing in, you know, more of these players that they have to find time for. Okay. Young players, should I say? I think they are right. on the road to 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 trying to bring in veteran help to help what we already have. You know, we already have a bunch of young guys on the team. You already have some vet guys on the team. I think they're just looking to round out the roster if they're going to do anything to bring in some more guys who know how to play basketball that can just help us improve in the aspects that we're missing and lacking. I don't think they want to experiment with any young guys and try to, oh, I can't get what I need out of this guy because he needs more playing time. Knicks don't want to deal with any of that. The Knicks are trying to – like, now we're trying to win. So I don't think they're worried about any of those guys, any second-round picks and and dealing with any of that stuff. I think that's why they, they did go out there and get the undrafted talent because there's no expectations there. You know, you might be able to use guys down the line, but right now you're just helping fill out roster spots and, and, and you know, you're, you're building your, your, your summer league squad and your G League squad. I, I kind of think that's all it really is right now. Um, let me see. Uh, I mean, listen that that's one way to look at it, but you never know. This may be nothing more than just a favor. You know what I mean? This may be nothing more than just a favor. Uh, you know, the Knicks are always about relationships. Everything is a freaking relationship. Uh, once again, guys, and I've said this before, the Knicks have yet to successfully go out and acquire somebody, you know, by just doing business. Like, hey, we like you. We want to bring you to the Knicks. Let's wine and dine you or let's we, we see you. We want you on our team. Let's go trade for you. They only have brought in people that they have a significant connection to. To me, I'm still worried about that. Until the Knicks bring in somebody, this current front office brings in somebody that they don't have, really have a strong connection to, and I can say, man, the Knicks did what they had to do to make this move. Or well, the Knicks signed this guy in free agency and wowed him over to bring him. It's always a, a significant connection. You know, They haven't shown that they can do what it takes to really move wheel and deal out here yet. Haven't seen it. Have not seen it yet, so I don't know. I'm still waiting. You know what? That's my that's one of my biggest pet peeves about their moves is that not one move that has been like you said a, a real and real time move. A move where oh man, that, that's why we're born in Leon Rose because he got that kind of skills. You, see, you know, it's like oh, I know your dad. Let's hire him. Hey, why don't you come here next? Oh. I know your old college teammate. You want to? Hey, let's see if we get a trade for you. A little, and let's give up our first round pick of one of the deepest drafts in the last 20 years. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not impressed right now. I mean, I think that they've, they've done well. And again, compared to the lowest common denominator of the previous administrations, 
I'm pleased. However, I'm not impressed. I can dig it. I, I, I can dig it. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. That that makes sense. Uh, I, you know, and uh, let me see. Uh, Keith was asking, so we skip the draft now. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but I'm just telling you that, uh, um, you know, the Knicks are trying to go. Now they're trying to add players who know how to play basketball to round out the roster. Like they don't want to, it's not about development right now. It's about bringing in pieces that can help some of the players that you already are developing to get to the next level and, and, and take this team where it needs to go. I mean, you're not going to do this forever. At some point, a team is going to say, okay, we got enough draft picks. Now we could use those draft picks to move to acquire like ready now talent. That's what happens with all teams eventually. So I think the Knicks are at that point. And we already talked about that window, uh, at least what it looks like to be. So I think the Knicks are ready to to start improving the team uh, in those ways. So don't don't get all Ricky happy, guys. <laughs> it, it, I don't think it matters anymore at this point. Um, and we should be happy. At least they did do it and 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 decided to acquire young talent. Um, and we we're not an old team, so at least we are, we're we're at this point. Right. That's that's, only, that's the same fact. Great to me because we have such a young team. <clears throat> and the thing is, again, just like my <clears throat> my sorry, my ice cream sundays are like two toppings on there. So now we got two toppings, and that's you know that makes me happy with a bunch of ham sandwiches. So I see I see what you're doing there. <laughs> that's, that's that's cute, cute. So my palate is uh, satisfied. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, all right. So let me see. Uh, I don't, man, I can't find. I got to tell you, man, when it comes to finding stats on some of these young players that haven't played in the NBA or not in college like that, eh, it's a little rough, man. Because I can't find all of the num the numbers that I would like to see. Some of these numbers are a little bit iffy. Um, yeah, I don't know. This doesn't look necessarily like you go to ESPN and they don't even have all the numbers. I'm like, whoa, what? Come on, man. What are we doing here? Like, look at this. What? Are you kidding me? They don't. Ah, oh, man. These Jalen Martin numbers mm -mm. can't really find everything that you want to see. I'm like, this is nuts. Uh, yeah, like these numbers don't coincide with what what I'm seeing. Um, but all right, so look, guys, and shout out to Agent Super Argo. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here, guys. Once again, smash that like button. Show your love for the show. Let's let the YouTube algorithm know that we in here. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Nick's one hundred is in the building. Salute. What's good, my brother? Um. Paul George. Paul George. <laughs> so, look, I, I'm, I've always felt a certain way about Paul George. You know, he's a really, really <laughs> special, very good player. The, yes. The, the health issue is the always my biggest concern. I got no issue with him as a player. He balls out. And he's a two-way player. He does it on both ends. He's what you want to see out there. You know what I mean? You can't be mad at, at his game and what he brings. I don't really – I can't really say a, anything too negative about his game. It's just, the only thing is that he just doesn't necessarily stay healthy. And the load management stuff that the Clippers had him on for a little bit, um, like – you know, I don't know. Like, I, he's a really good guy, man. I think he's, it's incredible what he's done, you know, after that gruesome injury that he suffered with Indiana to, to be able to come back and then still play at a very high level. He's a little different from what he was before. He's still very um, – he's still athletic, but before he got injured, he was explosive, man. It's a shame um, to see some of that be a little different, but he's also a lot older now. He's 33 years old. So that explosion, you know, you know how that is. That's life. Uh, but listen, Paul George, 
averaging 23.8 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 5.1 assists, 1.5 steals, uh, 0.4 blocks. He don't really block shots. 45.7% from the field, 37% from three. 87% from the free throw line this past year and is still one of the better defenders in the NBA. He's a really good player. He's just 33 years old. He's making 40 plus million and he is injury prone. But if the Knicks can acquire him uh, for not, not that much, not that much, I'm saying. If they're able to trade with the Clippers for Paul George for two years, it's not the worst idea. It really isn't. After thinking about it, had he had a three-year or a four-year contract? Absolutely not. But the fact that it's only two years, I don't know, man. It makes me. It makes me... Uh, Yeah, no, I don't know, but I, yeah, I hear you, Knicks 100. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, man, I got you. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a gamble. It's, a, it's a gamble. Uh, he's always hurt, always hurt. Well, I mean, it, the injury history. It 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 makes it more it's more relevant now prevalent now should I say because he is thirty three, the fact you know he's been dealing with injuries and now he's getting older so it takes your body a little long longer to uh, recuperate um, and heal and so nagging injuries continue and you guys also know that whenever you've been injured or if you had to have surgery nothing's ever the same right. So that's another thing. And he's been through all of that. So these are the type of things you got to look at and worry about. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Wiz, you out there? Oh, he might be still, you know, he's on the road. So, but. No, I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I, I was um, moving some, moving a little stuff. So. CG thirteen. Mm hmm. Uh, what do you think about Paul George? Mm -hmm. Would you do it if you were the Knicks? If they could do it, would you do it? Now the the price is where I'd have to hesitate, but I mean, my initial response is yes, love Paul George. Um, a little bit worried about the um injury history, the actually late season injury history. I don't mind some load management. So if he can give me 60 good games, you know, intersperse a few, either way, based on little tweaks and injuries. But if he can fucking get Paul George, at his, man, oh, I love that guy. I love his skill set. And so I would do it, but it, it has to be where it's – we have Randall and Brunson and – Probably wouldn't mind either. Yeah, grind, keep it grand and IQ. Anybody else that want to rotate out of there towards to get him? Not 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 all of them, but like two key pieces. Like like if it's Mitch and RJ with, with um you know some picks, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But mm -hmm. I mean, again, I do it with caution because I just like like I actually <laughs> I told yesterday I was talking to my neighbor who works for a certain agency that has the letters A, A, and C. <laughs> Not just in that order. <laughs> and he's a, he's a David Nuggets friend. And he knows... Oh, um, yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, so, so he, know, he knows um, he knows uh, a couple of guys whose last name sounds like a flower. You know? <laughs> and he says, I know them both. And knowing... And hopefully, I don't, I don't mess him up where they call him up and, hey, you've been talking to that cat. And it could be listening. 
He says that um, he thinks Leon is, is a little risk averse. And because the contract ends in two years, he may be hesitant to make any serious moves that could jeopardize in the, the next, you know, next year. But one more year, let's say they get second round again and do well, or possibly even make ECF yes, that year, you know, this coming season. That's, a, that's an extension right there. Mm. They won't let him go lame duck and have one last year, right? So it'll be an extension. He says at that point, once he locks in in the second term, and then he starts to go, let's go a little riskier now. But right now, I think she's going to be a little risk of breath, a little cautious. And that's why he probably wouldn't pull the trigger on someone like a Paul Drug. Okay. So that, that, so, but I would, I would, I would do it. I'm sorry. I love, I love Paul George. I love that guy. You know, I just think he's PG 13. I mean, I take him over Kawhi. Most of course injury, but I take him over Kawhi right now. Um, I would have probably taken Levine over him. Um, I'll, and again, I, I don't like the two year, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind it because. I think if if he doesn't, if we don't make serious steps with him on the team in two mm-hmm. years, then we got then we have we have other issues, which means. But it's also a good thing he'll be gone off the books. We got the, we got the you know the cap space, and we can start you know making another move. So I don't mind as much. I I do prefer the Levine longer term lockup, especially because he's a little younger, but. You know, I don't mind um, PG-13 being, being gone at 35 years old and giving us all he got for two years. Mm-hmm. Or re signing with us if he is, if we really are killing, making those kind of, that kind of noise. So, yeah, that's where I am, man. Okay. All right. Um, let me see what the chat is saying, how they feel about it, because, uh, yeah, I know people are on the fence. I get it. Don't, don't. Don't don't uh, shoot the messenger, guys. I'm just I'm just you know, this is what's out there because you guys know like a lot a lot of the other p- um, players that have been rumored, it's tr- starting to dry up. Now you still got the big dogs out there like Cat and a couple other people, but uh, you know things are a little like as far as the big names that have been kind of rumored to be moving around, uh, it's starting to to dry up a little bit. But um, let's see here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Go back up here. Uh, Billy Goat says, go get PG-13 for two years. Spend that money. Scared money don't make none. We got plenty of picks. Okay. Okay. Um, Coach Sire says, RJ, I heart, Rose, and two picks for PG-13. Well, um, we can't do I mean, we I can't mean, do not. we can't do Rose right now. Right. Um, but y- you know what? It, oddly enough, Wiz, you never know. That might be enough. Oh, if that's true. We can't, exactly. Yeah, because because like I said, some of these teams are really scared of that second tax apron. They trying to get out from under these guys, so they taking a little mm-hmm. less than they would normally take. So you never know. True, um, true that. Because, yeah, that, that, that deal Especially deal after what we saw with Bradley Beal. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's crazy. So, what? Yeah, I take it back. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, but I like it's going in the opposite direction because before Rudy Gobert messed up everything, especially messed up the Knicks with Donovan Mitchell. Now, had Rudy Gobert gone for something like like what they got Bradley Beal for, then I'd have been like, yes, <laughs> maybe we could get Donovan Mitchell for peanuts, though. No, but anyway, it didn't happen that way. Um, Shaw Power says 55 games in the playoffs. I just might take a shot. Hmm. Felicia Lee, salute. What's good? Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, no PG-13. We don't have a load management coach. He couldn't play in the playoffs after being load managed with our coach. He would stay on the injured list. Very. That could be very true. You may be very right about that. 
Yeah, that was a well said. Great take on that one. I keep um, coaches. <laughs> right. Uh, Hinton Murphy says, what up, Hinton? Good to see you, brother. I hope you're doing well. He said he's due an extension over the summer, so I don't think he'll agree to the deal unless he gets some guarantee of that. Plus, Knicks can't use D. Rose now. Exactly. You know, that is very true. Um, yeah, so basically using D. Rose, yeah, that, yeah, that stinks. Well, it is what it is. Uh, shout out to Wesley Robinson. Salute. Good to see you. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here. I'm checking in from Strong On. I still... Uh, I guess he likes Buddy Heald and Miles Miles Garrett, or you mean Miles Turner? Or do you? I don't know. Who's Miles Garrett? Am I bugging out? I'm trying to think. Maybe there's somebody I don't know. Um, or OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam. Salute. Hey, hey, I appreciate you, Wesley. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, listen, Pascal Siakam is still somebody out there. OG Ananobi is still somebody out there. Obviously, Buddy Heald is out there. Um, and if you're talking about Miles Turner, yeah, he's another one that is still out there. Like, I mean, you know, there's different things. Uh, I wouldn't close close the door. If, if, if the Knicks, listen, as Knicks fans, I'm asking you guys this right now. If the Knicks were somehow able to, to trade and acquire, they would have to give up some pieces. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't know how they do that. But say they were able to to keep Brunson and either uh, Randall or RJ. One of the two, because I think one of them would have to go. And they were able to trade for Miles Turner and OG Ananobi. Would you guys be happy with that or would you not like that? Just asking. If they put out a, a, a team out there where it would be like Jalen Brunson, uh, Quentin Grimes, OG Ananobi, Julius Randle, Miles Turner, or uh, or, you know, Jalen Brunson, Quentin Grimes, OG Ananobi, Miles Turner, and Mitchell Robinson, which is kind of wild. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know. I see where you're going. Um, yeah. I, I, I said, sign me up yesterday. I like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't mind it. Again, Miles, OG's injury history. Uh, my, again, a little hesitation, a little pause, but not quite. But Miles Turner, that little stretch. Oh man, um, I, I I like Mitchell, but again, queen, the Queen actually said it. That one-dimensional right. aspect where he can actually be taken out the floor because he can't. The fear of the foul shooting, even though he hit it, knock it down when it was touched in the playoff, but also the lack of offensive skill set. I just wish, yeah, I just wish he could add just one more dimension to his game. If Mitch could add a little. Game of hook, a little bit of movement where he can do one dribble, get to the basket, or I don't think it should I think we have some of it. If we can incorporate it and see it, I'd be less, you know, I'd be a little hesitant about just getting him out of there. But right now I think mouse mouse kind of and OG instead of RJ and Mitch, that's that's a squad I would kind of right now for. Hmm. Okay. And 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 even what I just said, guys, you could also instead of like Quentin Grimes, you could replace Quentin Grimes with IQ instead. Maybe IQ is that guy that starts at shooting guard with Jalen Brunson. Maybe you like that better. I don't know. Because it all depends on who you would have to give up in trade. Either, you know, either way, in these trade scenarios, either Randall would go or RJ would go, Obi would be gone. Quentin Grimes or IQ would be gone. Mitch might be gone, depending. Like, it all depends on how you move it, but th there would be some guys who would have to move around. I'm just I'm just seeing if if the whole point of having OG, you know, the, the three constant players that you know you would have would be Jalen Brunson, OG Ananobi, and Miles Turner. 
and then we'd figure out who else we got left on the team depending on who you'd send out but would you guys like that or even think about that working just the question i'm just curious um let me see where was i uh okay julian blum is in the building salute what's good julian hope you're doing well brother um cc in the building my guy kata jana what's good uh, he said, remember PG-13 in, in his heyday? We are going to get a flashback of Kiki Van Dwey trade in his downside. <laughs> oh, good old Kiki Van Dwey. Uh, Paris Douglas says, guess where the whole league is trying to shop at? Yes, it's the next store of young players with upside and are marketable. You may be right. Uh, I, I got to see it to believe it, though, because I haven't seen anything yet. But I, you may be right. But they're definitely using us. The name out there. Mm -hmm. Walter Blackman I'm says I'm upset about what? it, my friend Kiki, because that's that's my that's my PTSD. That's my PTSD, hey. Kiki. And I just I just I can't stand someone bringing it back up because now I just had a flashback and I and yeah. Oh man. Kiki ran away. Hey Kiki. And, you know, we could have drafted him by the way, you know, right? You know, we had um, we, of course. And we said, no, we don't want him now. Wait till his knees are bad. We need to heal him and get some bad. That's what we do, man. We love to get you when you you almost out the league or you got some ailing injury that's that's that sapped you of who you used to be. Uh, <laughs> in, enter Anthony, Anthony McDice. Antonio oh, McDice, should geez. I say. Yeah. Oh, um, man. Yeah, yeah. Did we do that? Um Let's see here. Uh, Dunruss Gallman is in the building. Salute. Uh, he said the Tim and thank you for being here. He said the Timberwolves are not trading Cat and Suns are not trading Aiton too. Yeah, maybe not. Well, I mean, listen, if I'm the Timberwolves, somebody needs to get off of that team. So they need to figure it out. They may not want to trade Cat, but I don't see how it works. I think it was. I didn't think it was good to begin with, but. Um. Sometimes you cannot. Sometimes you can't give uh, every, your players everything they want. I, so, you know, you could look at it and say, "Hey, I get it, Cat. You don't want to play center. You want to play power forward. So let's go out there and get you a center, so he can do the stuff that you don't want to do." How did that work out for you? Not too well. So, and then you got the wrong guy because this dude's a knucklehead, freaking idiot. <laughs> so sometimes it don't it don't work out uh you know and now you're stuck and you you out you know you're paying a lot of money to to both these guys and cat is about to make a whole lot of money so i just don't understand why minnesota i don't think i don't know dunruss i don't know the the suns maybe but timberwolves as we've been talking about this whole tax apron the second tax apron the timberwolves is going to get hit because they're paying Rudy Gobert buco bucks. Uh, Anthony Edwards is, you know, I think he's, is he in his contract yet? Or if not, they're going to have to pay him. But I think they're already paying him. Um, and then Cat is about to get his extension. He's going to be in that $55, $60 million range. I don't think they want to hold on to Cat just because of those reasons. I, think, I don't think they want to trade a good player. I think they're worried about that second tax apron too minnesota's not a big market squad so uh you know just saying brian williford is in the building shout out to you good to see you hope you're doing well uh he said rj ob fournier and two picks for ingram and valentunas now now that one won't work that i can tell you they won't do they don't have to trade ingram and you know it's not a necessity. So if they're trading him, they're going to want something for him. And Valachunas is still one of the biggest, I mean, the biggest, one of the best centers in the NBA. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that gets it done. I think you need, uh, you might need a little bit something else to go in there because Ingram himself could, you know, would might, might cost RJ and Obi. And I don't know. I mean, well, you know, I don't know, man. Maybe. I don't know. The way these trades are going lately, I, I, I don't know, bro. Nothing makes sense anymore. Oh, yeah. I figured you meant Miles Turner, uh, Wesley. 
Appreciate you, bro. Uh, Lion of Judah, what's good? My guy, shalom to you, my brother. Hope you're doing well. Blessings as well. Uh, and guys, once again, smash that like button. Show your love. Uh, we got 59 likes. At least that's what I see. Let's see if we can get that number up. Uh, I appreciate you guys. You know, just hit that button. Close the live chat. Hit the like button and hit the live chat back and you'll be right, right where you were. You won't miss a beat. Um, yeah, D Rose just got declined. We were talking about it. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, it is what it is, man. But it's nothing, nothing that's unexpected. So, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Yeah, I, I read it. I already committed to that already. I know you were, and some people are thinking, let's use D Rose's contract for a, a pre draft trade. Or, or draft day trade, but I kind of was, you know what, let him go. If he wants to sign back for, you know, some minimum and give us a chance to um, have him as a mentor, and, yeah, but otherwise, let D-Rose go. You know, let him, let him go. So, um, but I'm, I'm going to miss him, and he should go to Chicago. I would have been nice if he was in the, in the Levine trade. Send it back home, and we get Levine. Nice combo, but sometimes that's not the way it works out, and I'm okay with it. Sometimes that's how it happens, man. That's uh, sometimes that's how it happens. Um, yeah, well, like I like I said before, we we just gotta really you know wait and see right now with these Knicks. We, I mean, it's very frustrating, but that's just how the Knicks move. And in and, and fairness to them, there's so much time left. You know, they, they, they don't have to rush. At least at this point, now it doesn't matter. D. Rose has already been, uh, his extension has already been, I mean, his, uh, well, uh, I don't want to call it extension, but it's already been declined um, for this year, his team option. So you can't use him in a trade. So now there's no rush. Right. Um, and if anything, it probably makes now it, turns into now it makes more sense to wait because as i said before it's more beneficial to move rj barrett after july 1st so we'll see if that i mean i'm not saying that they'll trade him but we don't know what's going to happen um to avoid the poison so, pill, right? Um, right because of the poison pill yeah right other than that um can we would you consider the um fournier to San Antonio for the cap space. That rumor came out earlier that oh they want a French one next to the Frenchman. I'm like yeah it doesn't. I mean it's not necessarily a fact because they heard um that Romiana actually has been learning English and his English is getting pretty good, so it may not really need him, but somehow maybe there's some comfort levels I have another, especially someone like Fournier, a veteran. Frenchman, go. But yep. but don't they isn't SoCon a Frenchman? You know what? <laughs> I think he is. Yeah, because I know when Wimbiana got gre- uh, gre- um, greeted when he got drafted, SoCon went up to him with his with his uh his reddish or purple hair, whatever the hell he had this time, green right. hair. I don't know. This guy always coloring his hair. He went up to him and, and gave him a pound and all that. Um Oh yeah, that's ah. be. yeah. I think he might be. I mean, he's not a veteran, but right. you know, true. I true. don't know. Okay. I know. I'm, I mean, if, I'm not... if the it, listen, if we could get out from under Fournier's contract, that the Spurs would take him, and I don't know what we'd have to take back. So I really don't know how that would work. But if if we like, what would you do? Well, like, I don't even know how that would work. What would we get back? Would we be stuck with a guy? Like, would it be an expiring contract or somebody we could actually, no, actually use? If a, if, a team has, if a team has cap space, then they don't need to actually send us anybody back. We just need to, um, they'll absorb the contract. And the, um, and, and the money, I don't know how much of the money becomes available to us as a, as a you know, exception, as a trade exception. So it can be done without taking any money back. So, wait, they wouldn't have to send us anything, not even picks? As long as they have cap space to absorb the contract. They don't. Hmm. I, can, I can take that. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. too much about that. I don't, that's interesting. I know. Hmm. I'm a capologist, man. I'm a capologist. Oh, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Get another um, yeah, yeah. I'm that's... trying to get a JLV on the, the Knicks. I see. 
Well, if that's the case, then I would definitely be uh, open to the idea, you know, because it may be very difficult to move Fournier uh, right now. Uh, maybe at the trade deadline, it's a possibility, but it might be difficult. Uh, Ian Begley, shout out to Almighty Finesse. What's good? Appreciate you. He said, Ian Begley said, we most likely going to run it back. I think we all kind of assume that that's the case, but I, I just want them to make, as I said before, I, you can run it back and still make some little moves that make sense that improve the team. That's what I'm looking for. Don't just give me the exact same thing. You you know, give me a little bit of a change here. A couple guys that can stretch the floor on cheap deals, whatever. I don't care. Uh, play some defense. Give me something. A backup PG. Give me a point guard or somebody who can help, you know, the stagnant bench. Give me something. Oh, my God. It's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's, let's talk about the uh, – Two, two players that the Knicks did get. First off. I was going to do a song, uh, song. Let's talk about. Oh, no, that's not. Oh, I see where you was going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not on this show. No. Not on this show. <laughs> uh, Jalen right. Martin. Okay. Oh, now, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Unfortunately, there's just not enough information out here for me to grab the right type of numbers that i need when it when it comes to a guy who's playing in these overtime elite teams i don't know what the deal is um these numbers are kind of crazy whatever this is you know uh it's it's it, they don't even give you the whole picture um i will tell you from the numbers that i did see from previously i don't know how good of a shooter he is i can't tell because those numbers were bad but it looks like he's improved since then I don't think he's shooting 20-something percent from three. I don't know, but whatever. So according to the overtime elite numbers, he was shooting in 2022, 20 slash 23, 14, averaging 40, 14 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, 1.4 assists, 1.6 steals, and 0.7 blocks. Those look really good for being on that type of team, not you know playing a whole bunch of minutes, playing good minutes, but I don't know if, I don't know what's what. Let me just read some stuff and see if that helps us capture who this kid is. Uh, Jalen finished the first season at OT. And shout out to, where am I getting this from? Shout out to the NBA.com for this information. Jalen finished his first season at OTE. That's Overtime Elite. Losing in the championship to the City Reapers. He averaged 14 points. 5.9 rebounds, 1.6 steals per game. Scored in double figures in eight games with a season high of 27 points coming against the Falcons. Um, he was named OTE Player of the Week after scoring those 27 points and pulling down 14 rebounds. He hit a season high four three pointers. Uh, he got, he was voted the uh, second in the most improved player voting. Uh, he had double figure rebounds twice in the regular season. He averaged 24.6 per game in a three game series against the Rams in the semifinals. Uh, through six games uh, in the playoffs, he averaged 15.7 points, 6.5 rebounds, and that's pretty much it. That was in 2022, 2023. Um, so, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, he, I, I, he looks like he has some skills. He kind of reminds me when I look at him, like Scotty Barnes. He's he's not the same height or the same build. He's 6'6", 219, 19 years old. But his game style, like when you look at him play, he kind of looks like Scotty Barnes, the way he moves on the court. He's not too flashy. He's not overly athletic, uh, but he looks like he plays solid, like he's making the right moves out there. Uh, he understands he's got a Euro step. He knows how to get to the rack. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I don't know exactly what to make of him quite yet. He's got some talent there. I just don't. I don't know. What what 
What do you think, Wiz? Or are you there, Wiz? Wiz may not be there. Can, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> My concern is, oh, man, is I think we what our need is, which I'm, again, I'm pretty sure is a knockdown three-point shooter, a hard, I mean, a kid with that kind of skill set, like Imani Bates, guys who just look like they can make the tough three and they can definitely make the easy three. If I just don't understand why there's no one in our camp like that. No one. Now, height-wise, you know, length-wise, yeah, he's, he, he passes. So does, um, you know, Jacob Toppin. But, man, I, I want some scorers. I want some shooters on our team. I just don't see other than Grimes. And let's put Brunson in there. Three-point shooters that really have me confident. So, right now, I just, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy about him. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I mean, uh. And like I said, I've gone back and forth with this whole thing about a young player like him. Don't really think he would get a lot of minutes um, because, I mean, the game is, you know, still developing. And I think the Knicks are just at a place right now where they they uh, are valuing talent that knows exactly what to do out there that is easily coachable don't have to tell them a lot you know what i mean we just need you to come in this is what we need from you this is what we're missing and go from there so i don't really know i don't really know how that whole thing translates um but but that being said uh-huh. he's got he's got some talent he's got some talent uh, I do like I like how he looks fundamentally sound out there. Like he's making the baskets. He's not right, but he's not he's not above the rim in a lot of the highlights I see. I mean, the, can he dunk? Yeah, probably, but he's not one of those uber athletic dudes. So, um, right. I, I mean, just think I like, he seems like a solid player. Exactly, and I think that's what the Knicks have a lot of solid players. Mm-hmm. And I'm waiting for a little different, you know, type. A little bit different than solid player as my player description. Solid players with energy. You know, energetic, hardworking, you know, blue collar type, you know. I want guys who can fly a little bit, uh, but short of that, I gotta have guys who, are, who people fear up on the three point line. And again, yes, rookie wouldn't. Probably won't try the rotation. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he would. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I can't, I can't, I can't say that I see it. But what I do know is that, um, you know, these type of players are like these are the lightning in a bottle type players. Like, you know, you hear about these guys, Oh, undrafted. Oh, second round late talent became this, or, you know, you just hoping you get somebody that has something that, you know, you can build off of that. No one else maybe saw or weren't willing to take a chance on. Um, And hopefully he's that type of guy, you know, that, you know, eventually he'll get a shot and maybe he can help the Knicks down the line. Anything could happen. Injuries could happen. Um, trades can happen of players that you expect to be a part of your roster that you had to move in a trade and now you need somebody to just kind of fill a gap. You just never know. You never know what can happen. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I think he's a, a nice looking player who. who can learn he can learn he can become better um you know i i just uh i just don't know i don't know uh, being that we've seen how tibbs uses these guys you just i just don't know <laughs> right exactly now last year last last off season i actually would Actually said, let's run it. Let's run it back. You know, get rid of the little extras there. 
but otherwise it's running back. This year, I say yes, let's run it back, but I really do want to have one rotation change. And again, it's that it's that three and D lockdown three point shooter. I just need to see someone who put fear in their heart when when he's on the outside at the three point line. I just need someone like that. And so that's my biggest concern about this year. But I wouldn't again if we run it back. Would I would I be surprised if we actually did put up fifty games? I wouldn't actually. I would be surprised if we get past second round though, because I think mm. Boston definitely I think really improved. I, I mean, people, you know, mentioned you know not some people like this about KP, but in that KP dimension with Williams, mm-hmm. and I mean the center position for them is is crazy right now, and if he plays power forward. And have Tatum go to the three, Brown at the two. Man, yeah, I'm worried about. I'm worried about yeah. Boston. Boston. And Milwaukee. Listen, all the Milwaukee needs to now. Boston might have just got themselves exactly what they needed. If 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 KP can stay healthy, he might have just given them exactly what they needed because he can help. Uh, on the defensive end, but they already got somebody there that's good defensively in the paint. He probably at this point is a more accurate shooter uh, than um, than their. Why am I forgetting his name? (laughs) Than Horford. No, go ahead, go ahead, Wiz. You were breaking. I didn't know you were still talking. Go ahead. No, no, I was saying um that um. Miami or or Milwaukee, they pick up Dame somehow. Get Dame, Hoo-hoo. then mm. then I'm gonna be scared and just be like, you know what? We gotta make sure we're top, you know, top five, and avoid facing either those two teams first or three teams. Yes, all we need is one of those teams to get Levine or Dame, and then we're looking at the, what's going on with the West, where it's. You know, Denver and Phoenix loaded up. And and then Memphis got smart, which makes them much stronger. And, of course, Lake is going to be representing, of course, Golden State. I'm going to run and try to run it again. So, that'll have me worried. True. That's true. Uh, that's a good point. So, that's why I just can't say stick at Staying packed means falling behind. Is my is my again my thoughts. Standing okay. still is falling behind. That's fair. I can rock with that. Um, let me see how this looks. Uh, Ronald Miller, shout out to you. Salute, appreciate you. Thank you for being here. He said, uh, "Salute, Ron." Panel chat. OTE um, overtime elite is like AAU on steroids. I do not know what to make of this kid. He seems to enjoy playing defense and has decent measurables. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I know. D Coolis said Jalen Martin is an in-house player. He was coached by Charlie Ward in Florida. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, that's why I said I, I kind of feel like he's like a Scotty Barnes type player. Um, maybe, you know, one, he's not as tall as or as big as Scotty Barnes. Um, and Scotty Barnes is not overly effective offensively. He has his moments. Uh, so this player's game just reminded me of him. Uh, Ronald Miller says his form isn't bad, doesn't have great numbers with the hand in his face. Catch and shoot, wide open opportunities is where he gets his money from deep. Brian Williford says is Harrison Barnes a legit target for us in free agency as a vet small forward wing off the bench if we can't move RJ? Well, I mean, it depends on how much money we've got and how much uh, Harrison Barnes is willing to take. Uh, But I think, see, the thing is, I mean, as much as the Knicks say they're going to run it back, that's fine, but the Knicks got a little bit of money. 
they've got a mid-level exception and they've got another 12 million apparently that they can use. Um, so they could get two players, which two don't know, but they could do something. We know they've been linked to um, to uh, the power forward. Uh, uh, what's his name? Hmm. Uh, what is his name? Now I can't Here. remember. Well, let's say we get like like Barnes, or you know, but acquire. We add, if we add him again, I'm always looking at who who got the rotation. Who got the rotation? I mean, for me, it has to be like Obi, or I can't imagine who else would be on the rotation if we get a player in that kind of you know that kind of skill set. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I don't know who who he would be replacing, but I don't think I'm not worried. Oh, this Nas Reed. Yeah, the the Knicks are linked to Nas Reed. They could afford to go get him if they needed to get him. Right. Uh, and even that wouldn't be a bad thing. Like I said, Nas Reed. I mean, I know people are upset about it, but if Obi gets traded and Nas Reed replaces him, the Knicks aren't going to be that bad. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you 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 you'll miss um, the the dunking from Obi and some of that transition play. But quite honestly, this past year, o Obi didn't do a lot of fast break stuff the way he's done in the past. Like the game, the way the Knicks orchestrate their offense has changed. And it just didn't seem like he was as, you know, that effective in that compared to the year prior. So, uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. I don't know, man. Who who knows? Uh, yeah, he's definitely Westchester bound. That that I know. That's for certain. Um, yeah. What happens with Jeffries? That's a good question. I listen, and that and that's Jeffries is a guy who has looked good, and he doesn't get a chance to play, and he's looked better than both these two young guys um, for what he does. So. I don't know, man. Wacko in Brooklyn is in the building. Salute. What's good? I hope you're doing well. Appreciate you. PayPal is here. Peace. What's good? Thank you, JJ. Uh, Nas Reed. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a very true point, Dunross. If the Knicks come back with the same exact squad and they don't make it to the second round, yeah, that would be that's a, that's a negative. That means we're not doing what we did before, and probably would get Tibbs up out of here. That's there's a chance that there could be some truth to that. I mean, unless we don't get there because of significant injuries or something like that. But if we've got the squad and they're pretty much healthy, and we don't do at least what we did before, yeah, I would think that you might have a point there. Shout out to Ricardo. Was good. Appreciate you, bro. I hope you're doing well. Um, he said, Ron, they can't run it back and expect to get any further. The talent as of now is second round worthy in that if the team doesn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, listen, you never know what's going to happen, but we didn't know what was going to happen this year. One thing that you can assume is that the rest of the NBA is going to try to get better. So you can't expect the same breaks. You can't expect Milwaukee to be upset in the first round and be up out of here. You got to expect them to come back better and stronger as well. So, yeah, the the, op the doors that opened up in these past playoffs may not open up this year. We don't know. That's a fair point. Let me see how this looks. Switch this. Now, what if, what if actually, what if something happens, let's say, Boston or uh, somehow the way our schedule and our, our season goes, we end up facing each other in the first round. Okay. Would you still be upset if um, we get knocked out by Boston fully healthy with a squad they have now and we're first round knockout? So I'm not, I don't know. I was talking about the round of being knocked out. Talk about the way we play and how we perform. Because you could end up. Accidentally walking into, kind of like how Golden State walked into the Lakers, 
kicking the way they were, you're like, they're just, they're, they're playing team. And a playing team knocks you out. You know? So, so, yeah, I okay. guess it kind it kind of depends on 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 how um, how everything plays out. Because if you do go into and say Boston is running through the league, right? Say somehow the Knicks get into the playoffs as an eighth seed. Not saying they would, but if they did, right. and then um, and then the number one seed is Boston, and then the Knicks have to play Boston, and and Boston is running through the league. I mean, there's a good chance the Knicks are gonna get knocked out by Boston. So. Is right. it the Knicks' fault if you guys decided to run it back with the same squad and didn't give Tibbs any better players, and now he's going up a team that is better now because they improved? You know, it, it it all depends on what happens, on how it plays out and what actually takes place. But I wouldn't doubt that it, it, it definitely is iffy, you know, for Tibbs. He's definitely – he's always going to be on the clock. He's got to keep showing and improving. Right. True. So let me uh, let me just put show these little highlights of Jalen Martin. Uh, I was trying to show it differently and put it in a different frame so that way I can make it smaller. But I guess I got to do some more behind the scenes stuff. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, so this is what he's looking like now. These these highlights are chopped up, so if you can't really see the whole screen, the best the, the you know it is what it is. I'm sorry, guys, but that's him on defense getting the steal and getting the dunk. This is him flying in for the putback. Um, here's him getting another steal, but oh, then he, he it turns into a turnover. He gets it back, easy lay, I mean, easy dunk, whatever. Uh, him dribbling, passing the ball to the middle there. Oh, and following up, he kind of does remind me a little bit of Scotty Barnes when you look at his 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 frame. He's just a little smaller. Uh, nice little package getting to the rim, solid. Where is he? Is he out there? Oh, nope, he's inside. Look at that move. A solid move. It's just he's a solid ball player. Looks like he's got some solid skills. Nice little three from the corner, um, and then nice layup, taking him straight to the rack. All one handed to the right. Pass out to him for three. He's knocking that down. Out to him again in the corner. Oh no, it's a steal. I'm sorry. He's on the other team. Then he passes it. Gives a nice little layup opportunity for his teammate. Then here he's open. Passes up the three, takes the layup. See, nice, solid, fundamental stuff. We don't see this too often. We get happy when we see Grimes do it. Nice yep. little layup there. Um, oh, somebody picked his teammate, picked the pocket. Oh, what's this? Let me just do a nice little layup move. You know what I mean? He has that good fundamental. Oh, that's a bad pass. He gets it, goes to the hoop. And once again, the Euro step, layup, boom. What we got here? Oh, he, he got his hand on the ball. His teammate got it. He passes the alley oop for his other teammate. There you go. I like him on the nice. defensive end, though. He's handsy. Yep. He's handsy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. That's him for three. Knocks that down. He's got a nice little, nice little shot there. So then you know, went straight in. Not, not a lot of rim. Again. So he's got some touch. He's got some touch. He is a spot up, like wide open three point shooter, though. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a miss here. Rebound by him. Right back up to the rack. I like him. I, I mean, I'm not gonna say he's a bad player though. He's he's very fundamental. It's a three here. That's all splash. Nice, another three right here in the corner. Splash. Yeah, he's got he's got uh, you know a decent skill set. Nice little yeah, back door. Um, and then here's the last play, and then just a nice little clean quick layup. All right. He, he, he plays a little bit like I used to play. He got a little game like I used to get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not too, yeah, not yeah. too bad. Not too shabby. Oh, well, you know, we gotta, we gotta see what happens, man. That's not, that's not too bad. Uh, he's, uh, he, he could be solid, but he's gonna need some time. And you know, under tips, he definitely, he, he needs time. Um, no, he may take deuce spots. <laughs> Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the, you, hey, we never know, bro. Because I think some teams are interested in Deuce. So you know, I'm sorry to say, Wiz. You know, you never know. I <laughs> uh, no, man. I heard. I heard the rumors, man. I'm hearing the rumors. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's 100. He 
He does look a lot like Grimes, although the only thing is he's six six and Grimes is six four. And the other thing oh, is yeah. he's nineteen. He's nineteen, so he still might grow a little bit. We don't know. He could get up to six seven, six eight, maybe. We never know. Um, you gotta see. But but I see you. I see what you're saying. Um yep. Who was it? Ricardo said something that I wanted to. Oh, yeah. Ricardo said one more thing. Ron. Orlando is on the upswing and they gave us a lot of problems last season. That's a fact. And they're only going to get better. And Monty is now in Detroit. So he's definitely going to make them better. Uh, yeah. So the whole league is, you know, continuing to grow and continue to get better. And when the team comes back and runs it back with the same squad, you don't necessarily know if you're going to get the same results. I see. That's the point. I get it. I got you. Shout out to D Ras in the building. Salute was good, D Ras. All right. So let's get to this Jacob Toppin, Obi Toppin stuff and, and probably get up out of here after that. Uh, salute to you guys. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Show your love for the show. Still, Nick fans, we appreciate you guys. Always the support is great. We got 64 likes. Let's see if we can get that number up. There's 84 people in here. Please take a minute. If you haven't smashed that like button, do me a favor. Hit that like button and, and uh, you know, show the show some love. I'll, don't worry. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do your uh, dance for them. Do your dance for them, man. They're, no, I'm not. No, nah, my dance is special, man. No, everybody don't deserve that dance twice. You get it once, you like, oh, that's something. No. Oh, but anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, need, we, need some, we need some super chat for the dance. Right, right. Okay, so let, let's let's get to the elephant in the room. Okay. All right. Uh, Jacob Toppin. Oh, man. So we already know that the Knicks have had some issues going on right now, some infighting with Tibbs and Obi Toppin. Uh, if you haven't already heard the voice recording, it's out there. It's not really much to hear. You hear a couple things about, you know, maybe Tibbs is tripping or whatever, something, something like I can't really hear what's going on. You just know Obi's mad um, and they're arguing or well, no, nah, I wouldn't say they're arguing because I can't really even hear Tibbs. So I don't know if Tibbs said something. I can hear Obi saying some stuff, right? And I can't even hear everything he's saying. But you know he's mad. You know he was upset because of playing time. You know he's mad about not being used correctly. And he's done and fed up. He apparently asked for a trade at the trade deadline. Um, the Knicks had put out some feelers because if you guys remember during the trade deadline, they were talking about, oh, the Indiana Pacers have acquired, inquired about Obi Toppin. Apparently, they probably inquired because some little birdie told them, listen, you guys should reach out to the Knicks <laughs> about Obi Toppin. Just saying. Um, and nothing happened, right? So this all, all this stuff starts to come out. Obi's not happy. Um, and now we know that the Knicks are looking to trade him. And then Jacob Toppin gets a two-year, uh, a two-way contract from the Knicks. Is it kind of funky? Some people are like, it's a little petty. It's just like a slap in the face. You know, Obi's not happy. He's trying to get out of here. So what do you do? You give his brother a two-way contract and for, put him in a position where he has to come to the team that his brother is feeling unfairly treated by and you want to bring him in? Like, what are you trying to say? I get what it looks like. But what I'm saying is, The flip side of it is the Knicks might have already promised Obi Toppin that they were going to go out when Jacob Toppin is available. If he's not drafted and he's available, we'll bring him in and, and give him a good look um, because they're all about relationships. We've seen the Knicks do this all the time. I don't know what this – I'm honestly wondering about this agency, the CAA connection, and what these guys, World Wide West, everything you touch turns into a worldwide mess does. Um, I just like saying that. I don't know if that's true, but it's fun to say. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Like, what have you actually done outside of these relationships? Is that the whole basis on what you bring to this team? I don't know. but. You know, it could just be that they had already committed to that. They might have told Obi a long time ago, listen, 
this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring your brother in if he's available. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, who knows how, because we never know. You, some people might look at this as spiteful, like, oh, this comes out, now you want to do this. We don't know if this was already in place, and the Knicks are just following through on their commitment. And w- first off, the other thing is, Obi has the problem with tips. It's not that Obi has a problem with Leon Rose in the front office. If Leon Rose in the front office had decided to do certain things for Obi and they committed to it, then they're going to do what they decided to do regardless. Remember, in some ways, Obi's success is attached to Leon Rose. Like, they're hand in hand because he drafted him with the eighth pick. So there's still that. It still exists, even though the Knicks are better now and can continue to be better without Obi. Leon Rose and Obi Toppin forever will be linked because he drafted him. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. And then you got these highlights that are floating around that show Jacob Toppin in a really good light. And I got to say, when I looked at the highlights, I'm like, hmm. we know he got the bunnies just like his brother. Oh, got him. Show, they're showing him and he got a nice little jump shot. They're showing his defense. This dude's blocking shots. He's catching people on the. On, I'm like, I don't see Obi doing that. So I was even like, man, you know, Jacob might be better than his brother. Like, is Jacob the the topping we should have had all along? I, I'm like, because I know some fans are looking at the highlights. Like, yo, Jacob does some stuff that I don't see Obi doing. But let's not forget, Jacob is not in the NBA. He's on a team in Kentucky where he's allowed to shine and show what he can do. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, uh, where is it? Hold on. Uh, Let me pull it back up. Jacob Toppin played uh, 31 minutes per game. What? Yeah, you heard me. 31 and a half minutes per game is what Jacob Toppin was getting. OB should be so lucky. Okay. So when you think about what highlights you see from Jacob Toppin, understand that the highlights are chopped up. It doesn't show every game. It doesn't show everything that's happening. It doesn't show his negatives. Also, the, the young man is playing 31 and a half minutes. As I said, Obi Toppin should only be so lucky. You know what Obi Toppin would be doing if you give him 31 and a half minutes per game every night? As much as we know who Obi is, there's there's some things that he needs to improve on. You give this guy 31 minutes per game, he's going to do some stuff. (laughs) I think we all kind of know that, right? I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, he's not, he's a good player to the point he's got some skill. Let's see what, uh, what Obi's averaging. Obi for the New York Knicks is, was averaging 15.7 minutes. His brother is basically playing double time than him in college. Double time. All right. So let's look at these two guys. All right. Uh, let's look at Jacob. hell is it there we go jacob toppin 12.4 points per game 6.8 rebounds 2.2 assists 0.5 steals 0.5 blocks excuse me shooting 46 percent from the field 30.5 percent from the three-point line and 66 percent from the free throw line 31 and a half minutes guys let's not forget that 31 and a half minutes for jacob toppin 12.4 points okay so what i will say is these are not bad numbers Uh, for a young guy coming out of college he can definitely improve on these and it's interesting i doesn't mean that i know for certain that he's better than his brother 
What I will say that I did see that I like is he showed some aggressiveness on the defensive end that I, I didn't see as much from OB in the past. You're starting to see a little bit more of it with OB. You start started to see some of it in the playoffs, but his brother might already have a little bit more of that, you know, and we don't know. Shout out to, to um, coach Calipari. Maybe he, he's helped with, you know, Jacob and told him, listen, you know, I, I seen your brother play. I see what he's doing with the Knicks. You know, I think you have a lot of similar qualities, but I want you to try to also focus on this. Get more aggressive on the defensive end. Block shots. Try to, you know, change up the game that way. You know, Calipari could, because Calipari's in that development role with a young guy in college. He might be helping Jacob to focus on certain things that, that you know, maybe his brother struggles with. Don't know. So that's Jacob Toppin, right? And this is Obi's numbers. So Obi Toppin, and you, you can see he's got his hands on his head because he's perplexed. He's like dumbfounded. Like, why can't I get minutes? Tibbs, Tibbs, talk. I'm talking to you, Tibbs. Anyway, 7.4 points, 2.8 rebounds, one assist, 0.3 steals, 0.2 blocks, 44% from the field, 34% from three. 80% from the free throw line. So if you guys look at these numbers, can you tell who's the better player between these two guys? Let me do it again. Jacob Toppin, 12.4, 6.8, 2.2, .2, 46 from the field, 30 from three, 66 from the free throw line, right? Obi Toppin, 7.4, 2.8, one assist, 44% from the field, 34% from three, 80% from free throw line in 15 minutes. His brother Jacob plays 31 minutes at Kentucky. Just That's key. That's very key, folks. You give Obi 31 minutes, do all of these numbers jump up and look just as good as Jacob, if not better? That's all I just want to get across to the Nick fans. That's all I'm trying to say. Wiz, you still there? Yes, I am, sir. So that 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 oh, let me do this too. Let me get this out the way as well. Okay, okay. let me let me knock this out too. Where is it? Where is it? Where are we? Oh shoot. Come on, Ron. You gotta be better than that. I thought I had it already. Uh no, I don't have it yet. So we can talk about it. I, I'll get it now. So, yeah, as, after what, seeing what I put up there and what I just said, what do you think about the Jacob Toppin better than his brother Obi comparison? Oh, did I lose you? No, no, no. Um, is he better? He's not better. But he did play, you know, that's definitely a blue blood, Kentucky, right? I mean, that's a high-level Division I school. Mm -hmm. uh, you can come back. If you're out there doing something real quick, you can just let, let come back when you're ready. Let me know. I can talk until you're ready. <laughs> um, okay. So, I'm oh, sorry, man. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm in Compton. And, I'm, you know, oh. I don't come around. Your, your people hey. are watching L.A. Straight out of okay. Compton. So I got to keep my eyes open, <laughs> watch my backs. And I'm I like, got oh, you. Man. I'm a Compton charge now. No, no, it's a little bit my wife. Has sent me a children. So I'm like, but then, I, but the good thing is, she's not with me, and there's some foreign sisters out here. <laughs> we a little distracted. I was like, you said Obi, right? Oh yeah, that's it. We're talking about the topics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead, brother. <laughs> so my next one is swimmer. But um. <laughs> Well, no, uh, let me give, I let me give my, my take first about um about Obi Man and his brother. I don't. Okay, he's younger right now, but he's but he's twenty three, so it's not like he's much younger. So the fact is, Obi Obi is still ahead of him, still more developed than he is. And I think Obi actually, uh, but this but I, first element is just the move though. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it looks. So that's my first take. 
<laughs> one second while I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, shout out to the chat. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for uh, tuning in once again. Um, oh, did you? Uh, <laughs> okay. So Nix100 apparently asked the same question I asked on Twitter. You know, it, I guess is, is Jacob better than Obi? Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I mean, what was your feedback? What'd they tell you? Because I'm curious. Because I saw, I saw the highlights and I was already thinking, Maybe Jacob's better, but you know, I had to do a little bit more of a deep dive, and I'm like, I, I don't know about all that. <clears throat> so I'm like, eh, I got I got questions. Um what better motivation than sibling rivalry for a bag? Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Uh, Knicks Nation 112, where the players dwell. What's good, brother? Hope you're doing well. Hope everything's all right. Uh, good to see you. I think I said, I mean, I, I know I've been seeing your name. I hope I said what's up to Vaughn Allen. I think I did already, though. But Vaughn Allen, I appreciate you, brother. What's up if I haven't already said that? He said, high motor, mid-range is solid, and defense is intense. He definitely looks like he gets after it, though. That I, like I said, it's like watching two players with the same skill set, but one just gets after it. You know, I said earlier, Obi needs to go, right? He needs to be aggressive about it, come down the lane, look like he's going to dunk on everybody here and there, make make the defense honest and make them start to be worried. Oh, Obi's, you know, let's cut Obi off before he gets in the lane. You know, stuff like that. We don't see that yet. And Jacob looks like he got that. Could that be the single difference? In the end, could that be the difference that makes Jacob a better player than Obi as they get older? I don't know. I don't know. No, but neither of them are young. So in essence, you could look at them like they're the, you could kind of look at them like they're a year behind each other, which in essence they are. Um, they're right at the same point. So it's easier to evaluate their talent. Just understand that Obi has not gotten the same amount of playing time that his brother has been afforded so far in this very young time but when ob does get them 30 plus minutes we've seen ob put up some big numbers so is he a better scorer than his brother maybe he's a little better shooter than his brother it looks like he might be a little better shooter um dunking wise they both dunk they both got the, the hops um ob's also looks like he's a better free throw shooter so just on the scoring side of it, Obi looks like he might be better there. Defensively, is his brother Jacob a little better? Not because I think he has a better skill set. I think Jacob just has a better maybe anticipation or a better like he, he just knows how to go get it on defense a little better. Like I'm I'm I see you going for the shot. I'm gonna go try to block that shot. Or I'm, you know what I mean? Like he just it's just different, but I don't necessarily think that. Jacob has a better skill set than his brother. <laughs> Will Salkin said, you bring in Giannis' brother to appease Giannis. Okay, Obi Toppin is not Giannis. That's a fact. We've done this before, though. We did it years and years ago with uh, J.R. Smith. Remember we brought in his brother? Chris Smith, I think it was his name. Mm-mm, mm-mm. He was no J.R. Smith. There you go. Thank you, Vaughn Allen. OB is averaging 26.7 in 10 starts with over 30-plus minutes. Yeah, OB's a dynamic. He can fill it up in, in, in his own ways. It's not necessarily what we would want him to do, how we want him to do it. We want him to be a little bit more well-rounded, but he does it how he does it. That's another thing. If uh, Nick's 100 said, if Obi is not motivated by this, he will never be ready. Nick's now, I mean, uh, be ready. Nick's know it. Yeah, facts. And the thing about Obi is, Obi had a lot of issues being on the tibs with his confidence. It took him a while to even get to the point where now he's talking back to to Tibbs and letting the front office know he's unhappy. But remember, in the beginning, he was just trying to be the model citizen, but he was getting beat down. It affected his his mentality. He was not feeling good about his game, and it took him a while to kind of start believing in himself again. I don't know if his brother Jacob is like that, but we'll find out. At least 
Jacob's got the stories from Obi to know exactly what to expect. But the other bad thing about it is the respect level. Obi came into the Knicks having respect for Tibbs and the organization. And he has since maybe not um, – he doesn't necessarily have that same respect for Tibbs right now. So how is it fair if you bring in his brother – Will his brother come in with the respect that he needs to have for Tibbs in the organization? Or will he already be, you know, kind of uh, uh, poisoned by how Obi feels about him? Because this is a family issue now. You know, Obi, you know, he may not say everything publicly, but, you know, the family, pops and moms and brother knows exactly how he feels about Tibbs. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of iffy. I don't know about this, but whatever. Uh, hit him up is in the building. Salute. Um, is it possible the Knicks can sign James Harden? No. Uh, no. I don't think they can, and I don't think the Philadelphia 76ers would be willing to do it. It would have to be an astronomical sign and trade. Harden would make buco bucks. I'm talking in the 50s. Maybe sixty. I don't know. I don't know if if uh, if Philadelphia would even be willing to do that trade with the Knicks because Philadelphia is a win now team. They're ready to win now. They got a new head coach and Nick Nurse who has won a championship before. You got Joel Embiid who's not wanting to take a step back. I want to win now. Um, so then, what would you give up for James Harden to make Philadelphia happy? Because they could just easily just let Harden walk and be okay and figure out something else. Why would they want to do a sign and trade to help the Knicks out and take Nick players back? Like, who would you be giving them? I mean, if you give them, if you, I mean, unless, like, if you gave them, like, uh, Julius Randle, maybe that would help them. I don't know. But yeah, maybe that. But then, you know, what would the Knicks be left with after? What are, what are, what type of team are they now with James Harden and no Julius Randle? I don't know. And, you know, Julius, I mean, Julius, James Harden doesn't play defense. <sighs> he doesn't necessarily fit the uh, the scheme of Thibodeau, but. I don't know. Shout out to T Money uh, is in the building. He said, I wouldn't mind seeing Paul George for the right price. I got you. Yeah, no, uh, hit him up. Uh, Harden is a free agent, but the Knicks don't have any money. So the only way they could sign a free agent uh, that would make that type of money, the Knicks can only give two contracts, I believe, from what the last I heard. One of those is like around 12 million, uh, something like that. And the other was is a mid level exception. Harden is a player that would make 50 plus million per year. He's not taking 12 million to come sign with the Knicks. So the only way to get a player like that is your own team would have to re-sign you and then trade you to the team where you want to go. So that's how that would work. Hit him up. <clears throat> Jay from PR says Harden is well. I wouldn't say he's washed. Oddly enough, he, he showed me something. I thought he was washed prior to the season. I really did think he was washed. Like, in, for what he was, you know what I mean? Not that he's a bad player, but from compared to what we used to see, I thought Harden was never the same. But he had a really good year this year. Really good. So, I don't like him personally. I wouldn't want him on my team. If the Knicks did it, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? But I don't see it. I don't know why they would want to do that. It doesn't make sense. Uh, no doubt. You good, brother. You good. Uh, Manny says Harden reminds me of Tesla. It used to be great. Facts. <laughs> yeah. And listen, you put him on the right squad. He still might be. What up, BK Ray? Appreciate you. It's good. Good to see you, man. He said, Yo, I've been catching mad flack for saying we should trade RJ for PG-13. What's your take? If they did it, if they did it, okay. It is what it is. 
All right. Healthy. It's a no brainer to me. PG 13 helps you immediately healthy. I just don't know if the guy could be healthy as uh, one of the people in the chat, shout out to Nick's 100 said he's recovering from an injury right now. Like, and he's 33 years old. But I'm with it if they can get him for cheap. I just don't know. I just don't know how they can do it. I don't necessarily trust the front office right now, guys. I'm sorry to say it. I believe in what they've done. I don't trust them to pull off an acquisition of a player that is not tied to a significant relationship that they already have. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not like, if you tell me that the, the, there's a CAA player out there that the Knicks, the Leon Rose and these people know, okay, I say the Knicks have a good chance of possibly getting him. But if you tell me there's a player out there <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily have a big connection with Leon Rose or whatever, I'm like, okay, how is this going to work? Or if it's a player that has no connection with Leon Rose and CAA, how are they going to get him? Because they haven't showed they could do it yet. I I got to see it. I got. I have no confidence whatsoever in them bringing in a player that they don't have a strong connection with. I have not seen it yet. So until that happens, I'm going to question them. Um, may be the case. <clears throat> may be the case, Knicks Nation. But another thing that I've said before, I do feel like in the end, at some point, the Knicks are going to have to make a decision. Is it RJ or is it Randall? One of these guys got to go. I just think that the games are too similar in style. Not that they're, you know, obviously Julius is a better player right now. But in style, they, their games are too similar. They just move the same. Uh, mm -mm. Now, if RJ played solid defense, right, and his jump shot was a little better, you wouldn't have to worry about moving either one of these guys. But since it isn't, he just seems very Julius-like. Julius' jump shot is better, I guess, than RJ's in some ways, but he also goes up and down. He's a little bit more consistent than, than RJ because he has other ways to score, and he's pretty good at it. They're just, but they're just, They just don't seem like they fit together to me. They've been making it work, but... It, I don't think it's been the right thing to do. And I think that's why the Knicks have been struggling at certain times because this roster is just, there's certain things that it doesn't necessarily make sense. I like both players. And you know, you guys know I love RJ as a player. <sighs> at least I love what he was because I feel like he's gotten, ever since year two, I feel like he's gotten worse as uh, skill set wise. He scores more, but he takes more shots. But as far as everything he used to do, I feel like he's gotten worse because he used to be doing things a lot easier. He used to be better at defending. He used to be better at getting into the lane and scoring. Um, even though he struggled at finishing sometimes with his layups, he still was a little bit better at it um, as far as like getting into the lane and doing what he wants to do. No, he gets – let me take that away. He gets into the lane easy. Um, he's probably a little better at finishing now. So I don't want to say he's – he probably improved in that a little bit. But his shot is horrible. Since year two, he was shooting 41% from three. He's definitely not shooting 41% from three. He uh, is definitely a worse defender. And his step is a lot slower. Not a lot, a little slower. I hate to use the word a lot. It's a little slower. He was faster. He was a little quicker year two. He put on a little bit of weight. He's not chubby, but he put on a little bit of weight. Maybe that slowed him down a little bit. So that's why I'm saying this offseason, if he can cut some of that fat, use, lose some of that body fat, get a little quicker again, it might definitely help him going forward. Stop trying to bulk up. Slim down a little bit. You still have that aggressiveness. You're still bigger than a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, shooting guards and small forwards. Well, shooting guards, really. I think he can, he can still be very effective. Um, hmm. <laughs> BK Ray says trade Lyles and big ragu. I'm okay with that. Okay. I hear you. I'm listen. Uh, 
I, people have been mentioned in Trey Lyles. I'm not opposed to it. He's not a bad player, and I know what he does well. You know, and he's you, somebody you can get on the cheap. Look, I, you know, I'm I'm not opposed. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. If the Knicks was to get him, would I be mad? No, because I know he can help the team. He does. He's good two way player. I don't necessarily like his attitude, or you know, but I don't care. I'll deal with it as long as he's an he's an upgrade over you know some of the stuff we got. He feels he feels a need. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of him, but I I would do it. I would take the trade. <laughs> Jay from PR says RJ is always two years away. Yeah, it's a lot of question marks with the young man. T T money, yeah, he definitely might fit what we got going on with Jalen Brunson. Yeah, he definitely might be that type of guy. Agreed. And and Atlanta might be regretting um, picking him up. I thought it was a little questionable anyway when you got a guy like uh you know what's his face over there uh Rayford uh Trey Young uh but they did it and then the coach suffered because of it because of his issues with Trey they got rid of him so Uh, T Money says attitude. What about Rand I know, but guess what? You still got Randall here. So you want Randall and DeJounte Murray, both guys with certain attitudes here? Does that make the team better as a culture or worse? Because there's more about DeJounte Murray than you know. DeJounte Murray is a firecracker. Don't get it twisted. So you bring him here to New York and around some of these Nick fans, you know how Nick fans can be. They're brutal. You might see a whole nother side of DeJounte Murray. I'm just telling you, you know, you got to watch some of these players in the league and how they move and how they carry themselves. When you see something, you got to make a, t a strong decision. Is this the type of player we need for our team? Can we get somebody else? No. If he's the best person, then we go get him. But understand, he he's a firecracker. <laughs> so, Ratatouille, I got you. All right, so uh, I think I was going to show, um, yeah, little highlights of Jacob Toppin real quick. And these are more subdued highlights. This is from the NCAA tournament that just happened. Um, and you, they don't look as flashy as the other highlights that keep circling around. So this, I think this is more of the day-to-day -day Jacob Toppin. This is what you would really see out there if he's on the team to his teammate. Okay, so, yeah, you know. Once again, nothing too crazy, but in this clip, you only saw him block one shot from behind. In his other highlights, he's done it a couple more times, so it's something that he's got in his bag. He does a little bit more than I've seen Obi do it. So that's why I'm saying he might have a little bit more aggression when it comes to that type of stuff. Get my guy Jay Boogie in here. Jay Boogie! What's going on, my brother? How are you, my brother? How you doing on this? Man. How you doing? What's happening? Hey, man, chilling, man. Can't complain. Just, you know, living life, doing what we got to do. That's what's up. Shout out to the chat. The most beautiful, most amazing people it is. It belong to us, you know, up under this orange and blue umbrella, man. Just come figure out, come through and rock with you a little bit, you know what I'm saying? See what's happening with you, you know? I know everybody feeling good, from, you know what I'm saying, about that fantastic Thursday we just had. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody good with that Thursday? <laughs> nobody don't like yeah. that? <laughs> I hear you, Jay Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot happened on this Thursday, at least not on the Nick front. Oh, man. Mm. I mean, we draft Josh Hart way before they had the draft. Nobody don't that, remember that? Yeah, that's what we did. That's 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 what happened. Yeah, yeah. We, we used honest, that draft pick for Josh Hart. Ain't nobody on that guy's level that came out of there, you know, except for the top, you know what I'm saying? It's probably – I know it's three guys that's going to be way better than Josh Hart could ever be. I know it's three guys. But it's a potential maybe fourth guy that can, you know, you know, 
catch him, you know what I'm saying, in his game, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. under the radar, you know, I heard that, you know, when they was going back to Villanova, he was putting that work in on Josh. I heard Cam was like, yo, I'm getting ready to come to the league and see you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He fell all mm -hmm. the way back, you know, so um, I'm good, though, man. Just coming home, just coming home, man. My um, my baby had her first class of karate school at five years old. Yeah, I put her in there. She's in there, you know what I'm saying? Um, in there, you know. One thing about, you know, karate, you know, it brings a lot more disciplinary to you in life, you know what I'm saying? It helps you with a, a lot of things in life, you know, as um, far as, you know, um, respectful manners and everything like that. So, you know, that was something, another way that we wanted to go and, you know, get our techniques up a little bit better and work on her balance and stuff. Cause you know, my vision, I got my baby in, in the building. She's, she's balling out right now. She's balling. I got up, up under that small thing balling. So it's two things that I wanted to do so I can make sure that I surround that basketball with one of them is karate for discipline and balance, you know what I'm saying? And then um, the other one is going to be track so I can deal with her far as, you know what I'm saying, speed and quickness and, and more balance, you know? And um, and then that small thing, all that's going to fit all into that small thing, you know? I'm working on mm -hmm. her right now. So, um, but yeah, just coming back in for my first day, seeing you was rocking, doing what you was doing, I had to come up here, you know, rock with you, you know what I'm saying? Talk about this um, Thursday that, you know, the things that we did do on Thursday compared to some of the things coming up after the draft that we're not going to do, you know. But they're going to encyclopedia right there, G-Money himself. What's going on? What's happening, what's brother? Good. What's shaking on? and baking? Yeah, what's, what's, what's shaking and baking? What's going on, J-Boogie? Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you again, man. Long time no see. Nice to see you again, Ron. Wiz, I'm sorry, Ron, that left last time to do some quick errands. I apologize. No, nah, man, you got to do what you got to do, brother. What you got to do. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, right. you good. Uh, uh, so let me, I'll get your your, your take on this. Uh, the Public Enemy says, y'all didn't know that Obadiah had a brother? Uh, who you talking about? Uh, I knew. We talk about, I mean, I've seen um, Jacob Toppin before. Um, but as I said, all they do with Jacob Toppin is show his fantastic dunks. I don't mm. need to see a whole bunch of dunks from a player. I need to see what the guy does. Can he shoot? Does he play mm. defense? I don't need to see dunks because in the NBA, you ain't getting all these dunk opportunities. You're going to get some, but I need to see what else you can do. You know, what what's what else you got in your bag? Um, mm. to, and, and I personally, I think that him and Obi are very similar. They're very similar. However, I do think that the the young Obi Wan Kenobi might have a little bit more aggression to him, which I like. Mm -hmm. I like that. But Obi, as we already went through the numbers, looks like he's just a better scorer than his brother. He can yes. he can fill it up. You give him the the minutes, he can he can get it going. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What what do you think, G Money? I start with you now. I go to J Boogie. What do you think about you know? Jacob Toppin compared to Obi Toppin? I think Jacob Toppin will be a, a pretty decent fit with the Knicks. I think he'll be all right for the Knicks with his athleticism and, and aggression. But Obadiah Toppin, Obadiah Richard Toppin Jr., <laughs> a.k.a. Obi Toppin, though, um, is just a better overall player, more just arguably more athletic, better finisher around the rim as far as transition-wise. He can hit the corner three. If you give him the minutes, he could rebound the ball. Yes, his defense isn't the greatest. He still, he still, I think, will improve on that. I think Jacob Toppin will help us a little bit with athleticism. However, Obadiah, Richard Toppin Jr., a.k.a. Obi Toppin, is a better player. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jay Boogie? What do you think about those two, those two young – well, they're not young. They're both like 23 and 24. But <laughs> what do you think about these two brothers? I'm lost with the situation and what they did by going to grab that guy. Be honest with you, to me, ain't but two Jacobs ever did anything. And one of them was Brandon Jacobs for the Giants, and the other one is Jacob the Jeweler. You know, this guy is like, you know, the fifth best player on that basketball team. And then we we got him from him not even being drafted. 
So if he's not being drafted, they telling me that it's something, it's a lot of things this guy don't have. And then they brought him straight in, you know, instead of just putting him on the summer league, give him a trial. See, if they off the rip, off gate, off top, gave him a two way. You know what I'm saying? Off top. But I guess they did it off top because his last name is Topping, you know what I'm saying? But the only thing he got, you know, I see a little bit more ball handling skills as far as, you know, you know, doing better things with the basketball. You know, he's a little bit there. But, uh, I mean, Obi's still the aggressive of, 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 of the two right there. Um, you know, I can't, I can't take away, can't forget, you know, this guy was a college player of the year, you know. So I can't – I'm not even going to look to compare them to – but I don't. I didn't know and understand, you know, with him being on this New York Nick team. I don't know what they're doing. Far as you know, you know, with with Obi Toppin, you know, I don't know if they're trying to, you know, share some things or if they're trying to give us a hint. I just don't know what they're doing. But I just know, um, a two way deal. Oh, wow, that's just like man. Mm. What, what are you you trying to say something to Obi like yo we gonna get your brother calm down what I mean I just I don't I don't get it but you know it is what it is you know but honest with you I don't care nothing care less about the guy you know I'm 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 on I need that trophy so I see hey. about trying to go at least um play for that trophy then all these moves here don't even matter. I hear you. I mean, I uh, can't, 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 uh, can't argue with the the feeling about that. Uh, hmm. Shout out to to Paris Duggar. Thank you for the generous super chat, my brother. Indeed. As always, yeah, he boy. said, "Ob winning the war against Tibbs while introducing the Toppins." Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. it's crazy. It's wild. I don't know what's happening here, but I kind of, like I said, I feel that this was something. This front office makes me, it's driving me nuts, man. I feel like this was already in play a while ago. So all this stuff happening with OB, uh, now I think this idea, I feel like this Jacob Toppin thing was already talked about a long time ago, and the Knicks committed to trying to do something like this. If the, You know, with, when, within reason, like, oh, if we're going to jump into the draft and draft somebody and use our picks or do something like that, you know, we ain't doing this. But if we ain't doing nothing, and we ain't going to have no picks, and your brother is not drafted, we'll go scoop him up. I feel like something like that was already in play, but you know, who knows? I could be wrong. Maybe the Knicks is spiteful. Maybe this is Tips. Maybe Tips said, "Go get, go get Jacob." I don't know. It's crazy. This whole thing is wild. It's wild, but we'll see. Uh, shout out to Kerry Cox. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, as always, good to see you. He says. Knicks just offered RJ, OB, and picks to Brooklyn for Bridges. I don't know if this is true. Okay. I don't know if this is true, Carrie. Are you just trolling? But if it is true, I would be comfortable with this move. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. <laughs> I love that. But I do not think that there's no way in hell that the Nets would make this trade. Unless... Yeah. Unless, I mean, th don't get me wrong, unless I don't know how many picks, unless the picks is just like, mm, the Nets are like, mm, let's get those, or something else is going on, I don't see it. If apparently Portland offered the third pick and Anthony Simons from Macau Bridges and they said no, I don't know, man. I can't see them, I can't see the Knicks offering anything that they would like. Because the third pick in the draft, which turned out to be Scoot and Anthony Simons, mm. nah, B. They I don't offered know. them that. Yeah, yeah. And the Nets said no. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? How the hell would they take this offer over that offer? Like I said, I don't, I don't know how big this is. How many picks is involved? If it was RJ Obi and three first round picks, um, maybe I don't know. That's a lot. But I'm just saying, I you know, and and I did say this before, guys. I said before, if the Knicks want Macau Bridges, you're gonna have to overpay. I said I it, and you're going to have to overpay because they value him. 
they they he's the best they got right now. That's fine. Any a two way player. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know how you how you feel about that, Jay Boogie. <laughs> And I, I look at it like, yo, you know, you know, the uh, the owner has done, you know, you know, favors for his guys. He did a favor for KD, you know what I'm saying? But again, until you go tell that owner, yo, listen, man, I know you might not want to, but yo, I would much rather go play over there. Let me go be with my friends and my homies. Until you go and tell these people that then you're going to hear more and more rumors about certain things. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm really trying to keep my head away from them rumors, you know what I'm saying? Because they coming out with all types of stuff, you know? And I, I see ain't nobody like the rumor I put out, you know, last week, you know what I'm saying, when I was on the show. And I put the rumor out, you know what I'm saying, that the Knicks, you know what I'm saying, just signed, you know what I'm saying, um, but not all uh, uh, – um, Hopkins, I told y'all that nobody wanted to ride and keep you know what I'm saying sharing that right there, but everybody want to make up their own you know all types the, the of ex, the executioner. Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we signed a wide receiver to play the three, y'all. I said that last week, man. He ain't he he he's not a free agent no more. You know they just yeah. announced it. You know, um, uh, but I would love to have that guy over here. That guy 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 is over here, man. He shows up a whole lot of things, you know, as far as our squad. One, you know what I'm saying? He's a hard worker. He's a good kid. And he can it's he can play everything it is, you know what I'm saying, on the floor. He's a three and D. He can play stop. He can play you check the best, either one, two, or three, you know what I'm saying, depending on who it is. And if he's playing the four like Kevin Durant, he's willing to check him too. You know what I'm saying? This, you know, it would do wonders for us, but I just I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. But it sounds good. I'm, I'm I mean, immediately sending them guys. Listen, first off, are you telling me? I, you know, I know <clears throat> there's some people, like if this is real, then say they did offer RJ OB, and let's just for the sake of argument say three picks, three first round picks, maybe even a second round pick just to sweeten the pot because, you know, we got a bunch of those and what are we doing with those? Right. Mm-hmm. Say they did that. And some play, some people might be like, damn it, man. We, we've given away our, all our assets. Going forward, this team don't do nothing. We stuck. That's the life of the NBA. You make the team as best as you could, and eventually you're going to have to rebuild assets again if you don't get to the point where you want. But you got to go all in at a certain point, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine being stuck with, with the team of Jalen Brunson, <clears throat> Quentin Grimes or IQ because we know notice I didn't mention I mean they're not in this trade. Mm-hmm. Imagine being stuck with Jalen Brunson, either Quentin Grimes or IQ at the at the shooting guard. Macau Bridges at the three, Julius Randle at the four, Mitchell Robinson at the five, and then you can still go out there and get yourself a Nas Reed to come off the bench, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you still have like i said either quickly or grimes so one of them will be on the bench you still got you can get up you can still go get josh hart um then you know you still got hartenstein and you can still figure out who you want to add because remember the knicks still as i said earlier got a mid-level exception and they have a 12 million dollar contract now that 12 million dollar contract thing might get sucked up somehow in the josh hart re-signing but they still got a mid-level exception um and if they did trade that you know maybe some of the money comes off and allows them to be in a position where they can bring in another piece you still have the opportunity to move Fournier you've already decided to decline Derek Rose's um 15.6 million this year so uh, you know I don't think and 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 a lot of these players are all young so I don't think you're in bad shape if you lose some of these draft picks and kind of have to deal with what you got Mm mm-hmm I, it's not it's not horrible, guys. It's not bad. If you're going to try to start going all in, if you could come back with a Macau Bridges, it puts you in a nice spot without giving up everybody and you can still rock with some of these guys. Yeah, I don't know. It's not that bad. I wouldn't be opposed. Uh, I mean, I like RJ, but 
For Macau Bridges, yes. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Um, but I don't know. I, like I said, I'm, I'm just asking. No, no offense to you, Kerry Cox. If, if that's what you saw, that's what you saw. I'm just like, you know, I never know what to believe these days with all these rumors, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, bro. Oh, all right. You got the link. My bad. Uh, well, you know what? You can't really. Let me do this for you because you can't really post the link unless I, I do this. Give me a second. Let me do this. Uh, okay. All right. Now you can actually put a link in the chat, Carrie, um, if you want. So, yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, man. So <clears throat> that's very interesting to me. Uh, but I, I really I don't understand how how this all like you would have to like it's an offer they can't refuse, basically. Mm-hmm. So how many picks is, is, is going into that offer? Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is crazy. <laughs> we'll see. Because the Knicks are really, when you think about it, they're striking out every which way. And, I, and, and this goes back to every team using the Knicks for leverage or to create buzz. Paul George is iffy. He's one of those that the Knicks don't know about. Cat, <laughs> I'm not even sure if Cat wants to be a Nick. So he may not want to be a Nick. Zach Levine apparently doesn't want to be a Nick. Bradley Beal's already gone. Chris Paul's already gone. Not that I really wanted Chris Paul, but I'm just saying he's already moved. KP's already moved. Um, your next person on the list may be Kyle Kuzma. Mm-hmm. But once again, if I have a choice between Kyle Kuzma and Mikhail Bridges, I'm taking Mikhael Tim- Bridges. And you know. <laughs> the, yeah, the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> yeah, the Brooklyn Bridge. I'll take it. The Villanova Connection, part three. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh I think, I think it's going um uh, it's still some phone calls being made around the NBA, but I think the the um the NBA is gonna be at a standstill for a few days until um until um Portland figures out what they're gonna do with Dane. Because it's a few teams that's gonna feel like they in the hunt for Dane. You know what I'm saying? So until that situation comes about, until um Chris Middleton figures out what he's gonna do, and Draymond Green. I think those three scenarios right now are gonna hold the NBA up for a look for a minute. You know, you're gonna have teams that's gonna wanna hold up just in case um they say I want out before other any teams make any bigger proper moves. Unless, we, unless you know, somebody does something and they grab somebody that can, they, they, that's going to impact, you know. But teams that that's, think they got a shot for Damon on his radar, I think they're going to hold up. Then, you, you, like I said, you got the Chris Middleton. He already mm-hmm. opted out, told them people, you know what I'm saying, yo, I need my money, you know. And he must feel like he's ready to go for him to jump out of 40 mil, you know. He threw 40 mil to the side and said, I need longevity. Do y'all got it? And um, then Drayvon, he wants his bread. You know, Drayvon wants bread because, uh, you know, he already established himself. Whether you like him or you don't like him, he already established himself, you know what I'm saying, as an um, ultimate champion. He's already that. So he's not one of them guys that's, you know, looking at, you know, chase for a ring. He has that. He wants some more bread. So I just think, you know, the NBA going to hold up until they figure out what's going on with these three guys. And then I like it. You know, Chris, if you don't want to be in Milwaukee, you know, if, you, if we don't figure out a way for you to come to us, follow ship. Go to the West. I need everybody shipping out to the West. Go ahead. Get out of here. Everybody continue on going to the West. You know, go out there. Because that's where it's it's crazy out there as far as the, 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 the name brands the caliber of ball players compared to what's still here in the East. That's why, you know, two, three quick, nice, solid moves on our part. And Milwaukee breaks up with Chris. And mm-hmm. they already say, even if Chris go back, Lopez is gone. And they're not, they're not going to be able to get Engel, sign him because he's going to soak up all the money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We still don't know what's happening with Philly. 
care less what Boston did. To me, they lost their heart and soul. I said the other day, you can literally go over there and snuff one of them in the face, and ain't nobody on their team going to do nothing. They, they body man, he went to Memphis. So, you know, them guys don't got soft over there. You know, then you don't know what's going to happen with, with James Harden in Philly. And then, you know, Cleveland, we already showed them what time it is with them. So, you know, a few strong moves that we can make on our end can put us right really, you know what I'm saying, in the center of things. But Leon has to go and make a decision and figure out what he what he wants to do. I'm tired of all this CAA and all this clutch and all that there. You know, we're not we're not bringing name brands to this team. Name brands of whoever you sign with is not going to win me a championship. A ball player is going to win me a championship. So what I mean by that, stop looking to satisfy these the name brands of, 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 of these these um these where all these guys have signed that and bring me the ball player. You know, mm -hmm. and stop catering to such and such brand mm -hmm. because I used to be here and, and I don't rock with them and and I don't want these guys over here clutch to come rock with rock with the CAA because we never was rocking together before that. Now it's about balling, man. It's about playing basketball and um the shots being fired amongst both of those networks, you know what I'm saying? They're not right. That's not that's not basketball. You know what I'm saying? Your job is, you know what I'm saying, to get them guys signed and get them some money so you can get paid. That's your job. All that pinpointing, pinpointing, this guy don't need to go with them. We don't rock with them and, and all that. That's not basketball. And I just believe the commissioner need to say something about that. If these two organizations is, is shooting at one another about about name brands because they don't like one another. That has nothing to do with basketball. You know what I'm saying? I love the sport of basketball, just like any and everybody else is listening and watching. We love the sport of basketball, and we represent the New York Knicks. That's what's going to mm -hmm. win. Not CAA, not Clutch Sport, not any other whatever agent group is out there. Your agent is they never said – 2000, they didn't say 2023 NBA champions clutch sport. 2023 NBA champion, you know what I'm saying, CAA. They didn't say that. They said the Denver Nuggets. So some of this <clears> stuff <throat> needs to get out of the way, man. You know, and and let's get back to basketball. That's that's where yeah. it's at. That's what we want. That's what we want to see. I don't know what, what's happening right now. Agreed. Agreed. And I know we're talking about the Knicks here, but this, but the, is it just me or the Denver Nuggets seem like the most disrespected NBA champion of all time? I mean, think about Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, KCP, Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, how to go through the soil, how to go through pain and injuries and all that. Certain guys, you know what I mean? And they just won a championship. Do you guys think that the Nuggets get, don't get enough respect? If you look at the journey of Michael Porter, Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, and et cetera, um, I mean, <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, r when you really think about it, I mean, the in essence, the Denver has come out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Not that they haven't been, they've been a solid team for years, right? But as far as turning into this type of team, when's the last time you saw Denver Nuggets being number one in the West for an extended period of time? This nice. year, they did that, yeah. Yeah, this year they did that, and they really showed that not only are they a good team, but they're a dominant team, and they can remain dominant for a lot of the year. So I think that, you know, it goes back to the whole thing, like, even with Jokic. Oh, yeah, he's an MVP. He's a very good individual player. He makes other guys on his team better, but what has he won? Okay, now he's won. So now the Jokic thing, you're going to see this thing blow up. Jokic is going to be, oh, now he's the standard. He's the best, you know, because he's a champion now. You, championships, winning championships changes how people look at you. It just happens. That's how mm -hmm. it is. He's he's a, he's a great player, but now he's going to be looked at, even, you know, even differently. Like now, I would think going into next season, Denver is a favorite. I agree. As long as they, they bring everybody back for the most part, guys are healthy. They're the favorite. 
So I, I think I think it yeah it, it took a minute, but I think that now I think you're gonna see it, G Money. I think now you're gonna see Denver start to get their just desserts, their just do, and uh, the, the it, I also think that Jokic's unapologetic behavior and the way he thinks about the NBA and just playing back, this is a job for him. I think some people are gonna love that. Like, look, he doesn't care. Look how good he is. He don't even think about this stuff. He don't care. He don't even want to be. At, he don't even want to be at the parade. He's like, I want to go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I yeah, wait I think, till next year. Let's wait till next year. Yeah. I think people love that about him because it, it's not like he's a bad player or he doesn't give his all. He may look like he's a little slow. He's a little, you know, how he moves, but he gives everything and he makes his guys better. Uh, he's 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 different. And there's not a lot of guys like him, so I think they'll be good. Jay Boogie, what's your thoughts on on Denver? You think they're getting the respect or or whatever? I don't think they're getting enough. Yo, and one of the famous lines of Ric Flair: "You ain't gotta like it, you ain't gotta love it, but you gonna have to respect it because it's the best thing going to date." Woo! These guys <laughs> right here, man, they are so they are so. They are so San Antonio Spurish. And yeah. I'm not talking about in the legacy, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about far as in the movement and the movement that they have inside their organization. And then, you know, uh, you know, people looked at San Antonio they as being a boring team. They looked at Denver like that, boring team, you know, but they they doing it in the right way. They scouting. They really scouted, mm-hmm. and they got their, you know what I'm saying, their marksmen. And just like San Antonio did, they got their marksmen. And then they stepped outside and, and went and signed small pieces. Like with San Antonio, come here, Danny Green. You know what I'm saying? What did Denver do? Yo, come here, Aaron, Aaron Gordon. You know what I'm saying? Small little moves after they get, you know, set in stone. Now the Denver Jeff Nugget. Green too. Yeah, the Denver Nugget has – the league trying to figure out how to beat them now. That's why Phoenix is over there together like that. That's why that owner over there going all in with them three guys right there. And I don't even look for them to even beat Denver. If they started a series right now with Denver, you know what I'm saying? They might win the first game, you know what I'm saying, because Denver is tired. <laughs> but I think, you know what I'm saying, Denver will win four out of the next six. You know what I'm saying? So um, I like what Denver is doing. They playing good basketball. And for those that don't like what Denver done, or the, you know what I'm saying, then you don't appreciate good quality, you know what I'm saying, um, organized basketball. And I say organized because I'm talking about from the organization all the way to what they put, the product they put on the floor, to their fan base that be in the arena and everything, you know what I'm saying. They done it in a great fashion, a great way, and they're going to be here. You know, you're going to have to take that from them, you know, and, and, and they're here. They're still young and mm-hmm. – and Murray, he's just really, really getting back. You know, Murray can, yeah, move on. Murray can turn up a whole nother notch. You know what I'm saying? So, and the joke it is, the joke it is, is, is him, you know. And Aaron and Gordon and Michael Porter, too. And Aaron yeah, Gordon and Michael yeah, Porter. Porter, he coming back from, you know, come from the back situation. See, they watch it. You know, they draft their pieces. You know what I mean? They they got they they took it. When nobody wanted to take a chance on Porter, they grabbed him and said, go sit down, man. Go sit down until you get right. And then mm-hmm. when you think you're right, you come back, we're going to give you this physical and make sure, you know what I'm saying, if you ain't right, you're going to go back and sit down until you're right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I like how they did it. You know, they, they like I said, they mm-hmm. so San Antonio Spurish with the way they do they do the proper, right. man. You yeah. know, but I, I can't hate on them, man. And, if you, and we need to be taking a, a, a page out of their situation and understanding what it is, you know what I'm saying, to build something and, and stick with the build. You know, but you know, San Antonio has some great luck with with drafting, though. You know what I'm saying? They don't have great, incredible, players. yeah, incredible. They don't have some, you know, marquee players that they don't draft throughout their career that became staples inside the organization. You know, the the, the, the Dave, the Timmy, and the Kawhi, and the, all the Tony and the, the my G- Ginobili's. Yeah, and they had some staples over there, man. The Jonte. You know, and up until the point where I mean, because he had a nice little five year run over there before everything, you know, got moved. Uh, yeah, they, they always, and now they got the Wimby, the Wimbyama Rama. Oh my God. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Wemby Whirlpool. The Wemby yeah. Whirlpool. The fill-in players <laughs> pour his D out. Man, they don't – what? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, it's always something. Over there. They, they, they got it. They got the but, you know Jackson. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've had some, man. They had some good. Yeah, whatever, man. Damn, San Antonio, how they do it? <laughs> Word. Damn. Understanding what they have and and not being scared to you know what I'm saying to make them and swing for your mark. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh, shoot, I was just about to say something. Oh, there it is. Shout out to T Money once again. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Uh, where did he, where, where was it? I just had it. Uh, Let me hold some money, T. Yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, it's crazy. Listen to Ron and Jay Boogs on some other platform. Glad I found you. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Appreciate you for being here. I'm glad. I'm glad you found us as well. <laughs> thank, appreciate it. Man. Thank, Hit the like you, button. Thank, man. Hit the like yeah, button. Yeah, man. Smash, smash, smash that like button. Like free. It's easy. It's free. Yes. Yes. Uh, shout out to Paris Duggar. Thank you for the generous super chat. He said, going back to the Obi Toppin, Jacob Toppin move. This move is a hint. Tibbs is in trouble. Randall, as much said, he played with a broken foot and was played into injury. Obi sold that Tibbs gets spiteful. Mm, interesting. That's another look at it. This could be, yeah. I mean, look, I, look, I think that normally – this is just something that happened in the way it happened, but this could be spiteful. This could be some other stuff. I'm not. I'm not. Hey, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, oh, look at this. My namesake in the building. One of the truest forms of Nick fandom. He is here, Mister Ron Cleveland. Man, man, man. What man, up, brother? Man, man. What's going on? Man, man, man. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. It's been a minute, mm -hmm. man. You know what I Wait, mean? Hold, hold on one second, Ron. Let me right. Wiz, you okay out there? Yo, what, yo, Wiz, yo, you still at the parking meter? What you doing? Yeah, I think Wiz is gone. I think he's just still, yeah, I think he's gone. But go ahead, go ahead, Ron. Man, fellas, man, let me tell y'all, man. I'm gonna tell y'all like this, man. Ain't no agent supposed to be heard. They ain't even supposed to be seen. They're supposed to be doing what's in the best interest of their client is true. And and, mo and most important, Jay Boogie hit it on the head. You're supposed to be making that money for them players. And all and, and so far as where the players don't want to go, miss me with all that. I can understand if it's a, it's a broken down franchise, they ain't winning. The Knicks on the come up. We win. You know what I mean? We mm. just been two games away from going to, to the Eastern Conference Finals. You know what I mean? So so miss me with all that 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 dumb talk they're talking, man. And so far as Zach Levine, man, hey, it might be a blessing in disguise that we missed that because let, let's face mm -hmm. it, he got miles in them tires. He running on a recap. He done been he done been retreaded, refixed. You know what I mean? So miss me with that, man. And and it really says a lot about who he is, too. You know what I mean? If you see what the Knicks got going on here and you talking but you don't want to be a part of it, hey, we don't need you. We want a. Hey, we want volunteers. We don't want. We don't want hostages. You know what mm. I mean? Shout out to Jalen Brunson. Shout out to Julius Randle. Shout out to the people that wanted to be here and wanted to be the New York Knicks. Shout out to Josh Hart. He talking like he want to stay and want to retire with that number three. Mm. Hey, shout out to them guys, man. All our young players. We ain't, we ain't got time to be begging nobody to come over here, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and so far as this this agent against that agent, man, miss me with all that. I I don't care about none of that. You know what I mean? It, it's always going to be competition between agents and all that. That's that's a part of this thing. We always say, Boogie, think about it. There's a war, there's a war in the court, and there's a war in the front office. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, hey, they, they, it's not in Clutch Sports' best interest for, for CAA to look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so so it is what it is. You it's know what I mean? That, that's, that's more, they play, their players may want to drop them and come be a part of CAA. So it, it's it's just it's just infight, man. It's, but my main thing is, man, ain't no agent supposed to be unless that player's going into a situation that's going to hurt their career. Mm. Like when the Knicks was trash, I can understand and say, hey, no, nah, I don't want to go there. But the way the Knicks are right now, they can miss me with that. And, and whoever leaked that Obi Toppin mess, I don't appreciate that neither. I don't care if it came from Toppin or whoever whoever leaked that. That was done deliberately, and, and the timing of it is real funny. 
We done been out of the playoffs since. Since when? Exactly. Hey. Why this hey. stuff just coming out now? You know what I mean? That that, that to me that's 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 trash. Whoever whoever leaked that, but my what what's shocking me if that stuff is true, because I'm not gonna even say it's true. But if it is true, it's really shocking to me that we would go sign his brother on a two way. That don't make any sense. Because if you got a problem with the brother, why would you go get the other brother? Crazy, huh? You, you set you setting yourself up for trouble. You know what I mean? Everybody know blood thicker than water. Facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. it, it just like I said, I all I could think is that maybe you know the front office and Tibbs are two separate pieces. Obi's got a problem with Tibbs. The front office and Leon Rose is connected to Obi because he drafted him with the eighth pick. There's always going to be that connection. And if Obi don't turn out right, it's always going to be a black eye on Leon Rose. So I just think that mm -hmm. Leon Rose might have extended the offer. Listen, you know, Jacob's out there and he's available. We'll go get him. And you also know the CAA connection between you know, Coach Calipari and Leon Rose and the Knicks. So I just felt like maybe that was just a favor that was offered a long time ago. But it could be something that just popped up on the radar and definitely could be spiteful by by Tibbs. Uh, um, you know, and I'm not saying Leon Rose. Tibbs could have went to Leon Rose. Look, you know, I like I like Jacob Toppin. I don't know how Obi's going to feel about this, but that has nothing to do with it. I like his brother. And that may be crap. He may be lying to Leon. Like, just bring mm -hmm. him in. You know what I mean? It, who knows? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't, it's all funky, man. The whole thing is kind of crazy. You know? Rick's Nation, shout out to you. He said the Knicks front office is being blackballed by the league. I wouldn't doubt it. I'm, I don't know if it's true. What I'm just saying is, you know what I think of, is happening to the Knicks? Mm -hmm. A lot of people had a certain feeling about World Wide West. You know, that, that whole comment about the Jay-Z lyric, World Wide West, everything he touches turns into a worldwide mess. There's reasons behind that. People looked at World Wide West a certain way. You know, he, he, you know, he gets into people's stuff and throws stuff out there. He does some wheeling and dealing. Kind of, he makes things happen. Leon Rose and him are connected. they tight. CAA made their little moves. I, who knows? I, CAA is a very powerful agency. They got a lot of business in the league. We don't know if all the moves was on the up and ups. There might have been some shisty stuff that happened. We talk about agents here, so I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. They all do it. So maybe they burned some people around the league, and now that you put them in a position of power where they're part of a team and, and they need to deal with you, you know, some some owners and some you know teams are like, nah, I ain't messing with them. Whatever, let them let them figure it out. Some go somewhere else and get your picks, or go get a player somewhere else. Now, nah, I remember what you did to us before. You screwed us. <laughs> Gotta do something else. And I just think that the way CAA and the Knicks have put this whole thing together, there's no science to it. There's no the Knicks have the best. Blah blah blah. They went out. They saw talent, and then they got them. Like, we're going to go get this guy. Oh, the Knicks are just shrewd negotiators. Look at how they pulled off the, the, the trade to go get this guy. Or look at how they went and talked to this guy and signed him and wind and die. The Knicks haven't shown they do any of that. Everything is just relationships. So the rest of the league is like, you know what I mean? CAA, just, oh, it's all the CAA stuff. All they do is bring over CAA players because of the connections. They don't really have any skill in going to acquire something that's not what they already know. That there's some maybe some truth in that. So I don't know. I don't know if I would say they're blackballed, but I think they might have created a reputation around the league from the agency stuff. And then now that they're in a position of power, the league is just like, ah, I don't know about them. I ain't rocking with them. I don't, you know, they don't know enough for me to deal with them or I don't like what they got. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I, I tell you this, Ron, I would think that would be the ammo. I mean, if I, I was seeing, like, when Leon first took over, if we was hearing all this stuff about CAA this, Leon Rose this, Leon Rose that, not one negative report I heard about Leon Rose and West when they took over. I didn't mm -hmm. hear not nothing negative, not from anybody. The only thing everybody would say, oh, the Knicks going to get players now because they got these connections. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so for the fact that, that I heard all that coming out when he first got hired, 
and I'm watching how Leon Rose been moving through through these whole times, man. Yeah, do I like everything? No, but I do respect what I see what he's doing because he's not let the one thing I can say about this dude that I'm happy about. Them days that you thinking you just gonna come and just get the Knicks to do some dumb trades, and and just give you everything for the sake of giving you everything and getting the player like going overboard. Them days is over with. This dude is a shrewd business guy. I'm I'm appreciating that, and that's one of the reasons why we in a good space that we in. Because if this was the old days, and we all know it, if Steve Mills was still in charge, and even if Isaiah was still in charge. We would have made some moves that we would have we would have been sitting here regretting. The Knicks right now are not in purgatory with picks, not having them. The Knicks' money is not stupidly tied up because we got two guys that's getting ready to come off. I mean, it's, and there's still a lot of moves that the Knicks can because still they're still talking about our young players. Miles McBride right now is coveted. You know what I mean? So the Knicks the Knicks are in a good position. All I'm looking at this as is is infighting. And let's face it, CAA, like to your point, that was that was rated like the number one sports agency for a while. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Clutch trying to get where CAA reputation's been. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so what so what people tend to do, hey, if I can't beat you and I can't join you, I'm gonna dirty you up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it kind of is a classic situation that reminded me of when a when a guy dating a female. And this other guy, he he hating on the dude. He want that girl. And he starts sending things back channel saying, uh, you know, he ain't right for you. He he doing this, he doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pulling he pulling the old Mario, man. You should let me love you. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so so that's that's what I look at this thing as, man. It, it's it's just a much ado or nothing on the, on our side, man. And either way it go, the Knicks in a great position. You know what I mean? Exactly being he gonna regret he gonna regret that statement because Staying there in Chicago, Chicago ain't going nowhere. And and no mm. matter where he goes, he would have had a catbird seed in New York to be a part of something special. You know right. what I mean? But I don't trust him anyway. I'm I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I don't trust I don't trust them knees as far as I can run. You know what I mean? I I don't trust them. That's fair. I hear you. Shout out to to Jeffrey Clafter in the chat. Appreciate you, my brother, as always. Good to see you. He says, um, are, are we making mountains out of molehills in regards to the whole, you know, the spitefulness, the conspiracy theories between, I guess, um, the, the agencies going back and forth and, 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 and it, you know, first off, none of this we know confirmed is true. But nothing is true until we hear it from the horse's mouth. And we don't hear nothing from nobody. So I don't know. We're going off of everything speculation. Oh, and shout out to um, shout out to uh, Kerry Cox once again. Kerry, I see I see where you're going. I saw I, I looked into the to the uh, link. Yeah, that's just uh, that's fan sided. You know, they always coming up with different trades that there's no official nation uh, official uh inclination to that being a, a real trade that's been put out there that's just a trade scenario that they put out that they're saying this would be something that maybe the nets would consider that the knicks should think about doing but that's not that's there's nothing true to that so is it an interesting trade yeah i would love it but being that we know what i did tell you apparently is a true trade offer that apparently happened apparently portland did offer anthony simons and the number three pick to the Nets from Macau Bridges, and we know that number three pick turned out to be Scoot Henderson, and they turned it down. So if they're gonna turn that down, I don't know what the Knicks could offer to them to get uh, uh, Macau Bridges in a New York Knicks uniform. Unless the Empire State Building, you didn't offer the, the statue. I mean, listen, the- listen, the- maybe we get some. Pizza, give pizza. them some. Give them some stock in MSG. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. I would have had to do that deal. If I was the Nets, I would have done that dude. Done that right? deal in a heartbeat. That's a tough one not to do. In a heartbeat, I would not have passed that up. <laughs> Especially if you can guarantee that I was going to get Scoot and you got the Anthony kid. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Bye, McCall. Bye. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it's not like the the, the Nets got some play, other players on it that play decent defense. They can still find – like, I would have made that move. But what? Yeah, because it's, like, it's not like they're retooling. They, they're actually rebuilding. I mean, let's, let's face it. I mean, yeah, they – what they did, they caught people by surprise once that trade happened, and they kept playing good. Nobody saw that happening. 
Mm-hmm. But wait till next season when everybody can game plan and see what you got up there. Let's see how good you are coming into this season. That right. team, that team is clearly in rebuild build mode. That was a dumb move by whoever the GM is over there, not to not to pull the trigger. I would I would have pulled that trigger quick, fast. Not what you gonna give me the three M's, man? Hey, do they not remember what this kid was doing when when Dan went down? He was balling. Come on, man. Come on. Hey, that that's that. Hey, that's gonna be looked at. One of them head scratches, yeah, from well, now. Yeah. Fly yeah. Turn too. Especially yeah, I don't. He he can fly what they think he's gonna be. Right. Spe- especially if he becomes what he what he think they, they think he's gonna be. So that hey, that that's that's a blunder. That's a tough one. That's a tough that, one. I mean, I I believe I believe in Macau, but that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> what were you I gonna say, Jay Boogie? You'd have been gone. Nah, I was gonna say. I mean, be honest with you. Be honest with you. If I was Portland, I wouldn't even thought about making that trade. I mean, on oh, game, I, yo, game, yo, listen, yo, money, go in that locker room, take your stuff out of that locker room, <laughs> and go in that other room where you know you you know you got the personal studio at. Tear that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna build this team around them three guys. You know what I'm saying? You got. You got what? What's his name? Um, Sheldon Sharp. He's gonna come along yeah, now. Mm-hmm. You got him, and you got yeah, Simon, sure. and now I'm putting in the middle. Scoop, yo, I need to get everything I can possibly get for you, Dane. I, so I'm Dane right now. For me, so, Dane, we, we can take me too, man. <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, Dane, playing Dane, Dane. These, 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 these. I, man, I'm, I'm starting to wonder about some of these people in these offices. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are they really thinking about? What are they doing and everything? You know what I'm saying? But they need to get their minds right, get their situations right. And, you know, and I'm going to continue on stressing, man. Leon, focus on the Knicks. Don't focus on nothing else, man. Focus on the Knicks. Because, honestly, the league is starting to get scared of the New York Knicks. They might not mention it, show it, but in certain ways and things that they're doing and talking about and everything, they lets me. They, it lets me know that, yo, the Knicks is like right here. They they on to something. And they they back. They on the rise, and it's up to you, Leon. You know what I'm saying? To add on to that, to continue on your prospering upon that mountain. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and, and putting us in the direction where we need to be at. You know, if they want to rock with us, then they rock with us. But don't, you know what I'm saying, let that they don't. They want to say, all right, move, move along. I like to see like two or three different scenarios right now that he's working on and to try to swing for up in the cup next week, week and a half. You know what I'm saying? So if, the, the, if what you want to do doesn't work, you don't go into panic mode, you know what I'm saying, and go do something stupid, you know what I'm saying, that's going to hinder us. You can go to your plan B and plan C. You can never have a plan A until you have a plan B and plan C because all the time plan A doesn't work. And when plan A doesn't work and people don't have tensions to have plan B and plan C, that's when they they, they tend to falter in whatever it is that they're doing. But I need Leon to just focus on this orange and blue. You know what I'm saying? Focus on the New York Knicks. Stop focusing on these organizations and, and all this and all that, you know, and now, the New York Knicks should be your number one priority, not no clutch sports, CNA. I got to continue on, you know what I'm saying, and installing that because that's where we are. Because teams are scared to see if the Knicks come up. And ain't nobody else doing nothing in the East. Everybody's on the standstill, you know what I'm saying? But we in position to make moves, you know what I'm saying? I know we ain't had no draft picks. But, you know, you can't say that that Josh Hart was not a good move to come over here. You can't tell me that, you know what I'm saying, that was a bad move for Leon, you know what I'm saying, to trade our pick instead of trading Dallas' pick. No, he knew he knew we was going to be better than Dallas, so let me ship, you know what I'm saying, our pick off and keep Dallas' pick. But what it was is, you know what I'm saying, they fumbled the ball and allowed themselves, you know what I'm saying, to get inside where they could keep their pick. That was the right moves, you know, if you had to do them all over again. And so far up until this point in day, right this day, Leon has not made bad moves or bad decisions. Continue on your path and continue to stay your focus. And don't let nobody steer you off course of what you know what I'm saying, 
what you planning and what you want to do because you know that's all they want. They want the Knicks to fall. They don't. They they don't like having having something good to speak about us on all these um on these big time channels and everything. They want to always say something bad about us, disrespect us and everything. Trying to find a way to keep you know cement concrete over our head, not the dirt, the cement concrete where it becomes solid. We can't get up out of that. But you know we don't we don't blossom up and came up and we right here in the middle in the center of everything. And 10 games, 10 games, two games from Eastern Conference Final, four games from the finals, and four games from winning the final. That's 10 games from that parade being on Broadway. Continue on focusing on that and continue on adding pieces, man. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite movies is Heat, Al Pacino, when he was in that junkyard and he was going to talk to that dude. He told him, yo, give me what you got. Give me what you got. Don't waste my mother effing time. Don't waste my time. And I say that that's Jalen Brunson. Do not waste my time. Do not waste Jalen Brunson's time. He's on a clear cut, straight, peaceful contract with us. But the thing about his contract that he gave us, that he gave us this past, this past young year that he signed, is going to get more. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to be one and two time, maybe three time all star. One and two times, you know what I'm saying? All NBA. You're going to have to get that man his money. So, right now, while he's on that lovable contract, you're supposed to be building the pieces around getting the championship. Don't build nothing around no one individual. Go get the championship while this guy. Money is cheap because you got to give him 200 something million the next time. That's why, you know, when people say, oh, I don't, you don't want Paul George and all that, um, you, know, you don't know what Paul George would do if he come in. You can't predict on how a man's going to play. You can't predict. Injuries can happen to any and everybody. But, you know, when that Paul George rumor come behind Julius Rand, that's Julius recruiting. That's him recruiting, you know what I'm saying? When that man sit there asking, well, you know, Julius, let me ask you this question, man. What is it like playing in Madison Square Garden when you know where other players, when they come to visit and play against you, how do you feel about playing against guys that want to come in and turn up? These are questions that he's trying to ask and figure out, you know, what if I'm in that building? What if I can, you know what I'm saying? What if I'm around this situation, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, you got the swing. You got the swing for something, man. You know what I'm saying? And you can't fail until you try. You can't make it until you try. Only one of those two things going to happen, man. And these are perfect type contracts, man. Man, money frees up. Freeze up with Jalen Brunson money free up. With Julius Randle money free up. If it don't work, that's an easy two-year reset. You know what I'm saying? How we can't reset in two years when we ain't reset it for almost going on 51 years? You know, 51 years is coming up since we won a championship. And y'all worried about two years, and you're worried about people's money, you know what I'm saying? How much they made, they make it too much. Man, that man, that nobody felt anything about that man, the man sitting over there paying, you know, uh, what, what, what was it, um, um, uh, almost 40 million on the bench between Fournier and Derrick Rose. They ain't sitting on the bench 40 million. But you're worried about what type of money could come in that's too much. And here it is. We got money on the bench that ain't even playing. That ain't your money you're spending. That's James Dolan. He's spending that money. And he's spending that money because he won a championship. You can't say nothing about Dolan. He's been out of the way. Been out of the picture. I ain't talking about the picture you drink out. He's been out of the you know, frame that hang up on the wall. He's all the way out the picture. He's letting Leon run it. Leon run the organization. Build it. You know what I'm saying? You got the Leon, you got James Dolan backing you up, and you got the fan base backing you up. You're not gonna satisfy everybody. We 50-50. Some gonna like it, some not gonna like it. The ones that like it, we're gonna celebrate it. The ones that don't like it, we're gonna always become and, and to start and start liking it, man. Just you know, right now, man, we is right position. I know we ain't had no no Joe draft picks. You supposed to set pack. You ain't supposed to jump out the building, out jump out the window. You ain't got no first round. But now the draft is over. Now it's about our time. It's our time. We got all these draft picks. It's our turn. It's our time. Leon, figure it out, man. Figure it out. Talk to somebody over there in summer league. Get in Vegas. Come here. Let me holler at you. Talk to them owners. I'm trying to build my team. Can we do something? Can we work something? Do you want this guy? You don't want this guy. But don't be not talking to nobody. That's when you're holding up process. Man, yeah. man, man, man. Woo-wee. 
Boogie, Boogie boy, you, hey, you said you said a lot, and all I'm thinking when I'm listening to you talk of what Leon Rose is doing. Leon mm-hmm. is finally doing something that we ain't had in a long time, mm-hmm. running this thing like a business, running this thing like a business, and when you you think about business, you got to be responsible. Uh. Uh, keep 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 going, Ron. Uh, just, I need two seconds, man. Been here sitting four hours, brother. Gone. Work it out. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. You're good, you're good. Work it out. You got you got to be responsible fiscally. Leon right. Rose has done that. We ain't we ain't been paying for no outrageous contract. To Boogie's point, that Jalen mm-hmm. Brunson signing is gonna go down the last twenty five years, the best signing. Period. When you look That's at hard. what we did in the production, we getting for that signing. And what that means to this organization that ain't had a point guard since, oh my goodness, since since Starbird, to Starbird, since Starbird yeah. we ain't had we ain't had a point guard. Boom, A plus. So now what what the Knicks been doing? Being smart. We ain't just gonna go sign anybody. We gonna sign that right somebody to come in here, man. That's why for me right now, y'all notice I've been real quiet. I ain't been showing my face. That's because I'm being patient. I'm fifty years old, about to be fifty. You know what I mean? We ain't one since I was born. You know what I mean? But I'm being patient because, to Jay Boogie's point, the Knicks have been impatient too many times, and that's what's gotten us in the trouble we've been in in all these years past, doing stuff, knee-jerk reactions to what other people are doing and not focusing on what's best for the New York Knicks. we finally running this thing the right way. Because let's, let's face it, think about Leon Rose. Other than knowing Leon Rose's name, People don't even see Leon Rose's face, really. You know what I mean? Leon is out of the way. And and if you look at us, the majority of our team is players that we've drafted. The majority of this of this lineup is players that's been drafted by the New York Knicks. So smart move, man. Smart move. At, and eventually, the Knicks got the ammo. They're just waiting for the right person to come available. That's all they're doing. And that thing over there in Philly, that thing over there in Philly, that monster, <laughs> the second coming of Patrick Ewing over there, yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about. Jay, and I ain't talking about Jagged Edge. Joel MB. That's who they got their eyes on. And it ain't far-fetched. It ain't far-fetched. <laughs> especially, especially if Harden leave from over there. If mm. Harden leave from over there, <laughs> hey, get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready. If Harden leave from over there, Joel Embiid won't be too far behind. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so uh, th- thank you, Paris. She says, I'm about to hit that like button, Ron, but you got to get my last super chat to set in your... Uh, you trying to you trying me you trying to get me to pin the super chat so so that everybody knows what's happening what what you asking for man he hey, said Ron, I'll put it, man, I got to run man hey it was good hopping in man I got some running around to do boogie good to yep. see you man always my brother G money always, always good to see you my my partner hey Ron my damn sick man keep doing what you're doing man stay level okay. up and you got to know that ledge man. Like Eric, like, like not Eric B, but like Rock M. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate you, man. Listen, uh, thank thank you for being here as always. Listen, if I don't show people the ledge, they're gonna continue to do. I know the ledge. That's right. Right out the window, man. Yeah, so man. yeah. <laughs> man, that's again, Ron. Man, we just we just gotta be patient, man. Let this let this off season play out, man. Before anybody ready to make any kind of, you know, what I mean, statements on on where the Knicks at, man, because you might have egg on your face. You know what I mean? Hey, it's better to get all the facts before you respond to a matter. So, hey, the, the offseason ain't finished yet. They're just getting started. So, hey, with that, man, I'm going to fly on out, man. Y'all have a good one. You Always. Appreciate you. Bro. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, I'm right behind him, man. Four hours out, man. Every time, I swear, what is wrong with me? Every weekend, I say, you know, I'm going to do like two hours, maybe two and a half tops. How <laughs> do I get to 410? I don't know how I do this. I don't say <laughs> I've I've been on since eleven thirty. Oh wow! Yeah, wilding wow, out here, man. Wilding out here. I don't know what we're doing. The track, <laughs> anyway, the train's on the tracks. Wow. Hey, listen. So this was uh, I think this was Parrish's last super chat, if I'm not mistaken. He uh, says this move is a hint. Tibbs is in trouble. Randall, as much uh, said, he played with a broken foot. 
and was played into injury. Ob sold that Tibbs get spiteful. You put so, that one uh, already. Yeah, no, I'm Parrish wanted me to put it back up. I oh, guess. Put it back up. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, because that's the chat go. Whatever he says, that's what goes. Hey man, Parrish. Yeah, <laughs> facts, facts. Um, let me shout out a couple more people. Uh, let me see here. Where where is he? Where is he? Uh, and and you know what? That that kind of it's funny that you brought that up, Jeffrey Clafter, because this goes to exactly who I was about to shout out. Uh, shout out to my guy Worldwide L for the love of the game, guys. Uh, appreciate you, Worldwide L. Good to see you in the chat. Miss you guys, man. I know you probably you guys are probably taking a break because it's off season, but we definitely miss your content. Um, uh, you and Hardwell. Uh, for the love of the game, that's right, the number four O U R love of the game. If you haven't checked them out on YouTube, please do uh, check them out. Um, and uh, was there someone else that I missed? Uh, I think I said what's up to G Robinson a while ago, but if not, what's up, G Robinson? Um, um, yeah, I think I got everybody else from earlier that might have popped in. Yeah, I think I think I think we got everybody. E. Gibson and 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 the whole clan. Yeah, we good. Uh, yeah, man. So once again, I, I thank you guys for being here and chopping it up with me. Um, I appreciate y'all. That this is going to be, as I said, uh, off season has some question marks. I do think for the most part the Knicks are going to run it back, but I also think that there's ways for the Knicks to uh, improve with this team. Apparently. <clears throat> You know, they're looking at ways to move Fournier right now. Uh, you know, now that we got this Obi news, we know they're looking at ways to move Obi. We'll see what happens. We'll see if they're able to to, to move Fournier um, and if they're able to get off of Obi. But, excuse me, I, I, I'm okay with that. As I said before, if the Knicks come back with basically the same roster, but they take that mid-level, give it to somebody who can help the team, whether it be Nas Reed or whoever. If they take that other $12 million uh, exception that they got and it, it, it becomes, um, you know, uh, goes towards the money for Josh Hart, fine. But, it, you know, now that we didn't pick up Derek, uh, Derek Rose, um, you know, if we are able to move Fournier and bring back somebody that can help the team, even better. Like, whatever it is, I think the Knicks will come back with the same type of team, but they might be able to improve the roster. We don't need much to improve. To become elite, that's a different story, but we don't need much to improve. We can become a better team going into this, this next season and, um, you know, have a better showing. Um, well, the good thing is at least we know what this, what this team looks like, and we know mm -hmm. what they're missing. They need a 3 and D. They need a backup point guard. They need some perimeter scoring. Everything else they kind of got. The Knicks can score the basketball. We just don't really score that well from the perimeter. The Knicks rebound. We were one of the best rebounding teams in the league. The Knicks play defense. We're a top 15 defense. Um, in the playoffs, at, at certain points, we were top, uh, top five defense. So we got that. Um, and leadership. We finally got some leadership in Jalen Brunson and, you know, Josh Hart being here, if he's still a part of the team, he helps with that too. The Knicks got some good parts of, of, of you know, building a winning team, a championship type team. We just need to clean up some of this other stuff that don't look right. Do that, you know, you don't necessarily need the big splash. It also all depends on RJ too, though. If we're going to run it back, then RJ needs to take his game to the next level or if RJ comes into this season the same way, very inconsistent, uh, not really showing a lot of improvement on different things in his game, not getting better on defense, mm -hmm. you got to look to move him. I don't care how much I like him. At that point, he's got to go. Uh, so, you know, we just got to see what happens. I mean, I think it's going to be – I think the Knicks are going to be okay. Uh, we we panic every year. We do the same thing all the time. This year we start off. You guys remember how Knicks fans were talking in the beginning of the season? <laughs> we do it every year. It's always the same stuff. Then we let the season play out, and at the end, we're pleasantly surprised. So I think it's going to be another one of those, man. We'll we'll see what happens. But G Money, any final words? 
Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, subscribe to my show, The Last Laugh Podcast, with me, Biggie, Prince, and Z, Zach. Two, thank you for inviting me, Ron. Thank you. you. Your show is always off the hook. It's always on the top. It's always top notch. It's always made you always tell the whole story, nothing but the truth. Thank you, Ron, for inviting me. Nice Appreciate to see you again, J Boogie. To the J, to the B, to the O, to the O, to the G, to the I, to the E. It's Boogie. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's a special <laughs> shout out to the Man Man Show since he was up here. That, you know. mm-hmm. That's dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Nice um, again to Ron Cleveland too. Man, man, man. Yeah. Yes. And everyone yes, in the yes. chat. Yes, indeed. Uh, Jay Boogie, final words. Yeah, man. To the um, to the to the matter what you was talking about, you know, getting rid of Evan Fournier. You know, so, me personally, I want to move on from Rose. Ain't no, you know, cutting it back. You know, take a comeback, cheaper deal, and all that. Yo, I love you. Appreciate everything you're doing in life. You know, what I'm saying. But if you want to be a part of this New York Knicks thing, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna add you on to the coaching staff. Let's do that right there, you know. And then you got Evan Fournier. You can't just move Evan Fournier and Derrick Rose off this roster with Tom already set in stone, a nine-man rotation, and think we're going to bring somebody in and stretch it out to, you know, 10, 11, 10, 10 to 11 guys that's going to get playing time. You're going to have to somewhere eventually move two other people. You know, moving four people and bringing in, you know what I'm saying, three people that, that can help this team, that's a good solid way, you know what I'm saying, to get back, you know, on the floor. I'm I'm okay with staying packed with what what it is that we got. Just as long as none of the other other teams do do anything. As long as Milwaukee break it up, you know what I'm saying. Long, Boston they they pretty much done. Long as Philly they break it up, you know what I'm saying. Cleveland they ain't get ready to do anything. They already getting the notion. Don't come to Cleveland, man. You know what I'm saying. Bone Thugs and Harmony, they just had a versus battle and they just lost with the three six mafia, whoever it was. You know what I'm saying. Don't even come out here, you know. So if nobody else does anything, does anything, I'm okay with us staying packed and continue to grow together. But I still want to step up and and close that margin, you know what I'm saying, and get better, you know what I'm saying, and bring some other people over here. It's our time to swing for it, especially if the East is getting weaker, you know, than what it is with everybody shipping out, going to the West and everything, you know. It's our turn. It's our time. The thing about RJ, I don't want to get rid of RJ. But if you're going to get rid of RJ over the next week, the two weeks is the time to get rid of RJ. You can't play games, you know, with RJ. And this is his fifth year coming in, you know what I'm saying, for him to go downward with his game and get back where, you know, uh, he ain't got, you know, he he, he can't go. To, it's going to be that much harder to move him if you're going to move him, you know what I'm saying. But, you know. I'm I'm okay with what's going on with the organization, man, right now. You just gotta like man, man, say you gotta, you know, have a little bit more patience. I know patience is hard for us, you know, when it's been fifty years coming up to fifty one years, but you know what I'm saying, you're gonna do it, you gotta do it, do it right. You don't wanna make no more any further mistakes to how we don't did in the past and overpay bad contracts, bring bad players in here, people that don't fit the system, don't fit the culture, just coming here for a highlight, ready to go to the party somewhere, all up in the forty forty club and all this and that. We don't need that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, continue on picking your spot and choosing the right, you know, way the way to do it, Leon. You know, that's that's where I'm at. And shout out to everybody in the chat, you know. Once again, if I haven't said it on this show, congratulations to any and everybody, children that has graduated, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's from kindergarten, public school, junior high, going to high school, from high school to college, and even if you graduated from college, you know what I'm saying? Congratulations. But just know when you graduate, it's always some, something else that's just telling you it's time to start over again, you know? So shout out to that. Shout out to all the fathers, you know? Happy Father's Day again. I don't need last Sunday to say that. And congratulations to my brother, you know, Worldwide L. You know what I'm saying? I just that's I'm gonna leave it like that. Just say congratulations to him, you know what I'm saying? I know what's going on with him. Salute to you, my brother. Congratulations with that situation, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Appreciate uh appreciate you, Jay Boogie, as always. Definitely, you know, every time you you can make it, I'm always happy to have you chopping it up with you, my brother. Um uh so appreciate you, brother. Yeah, no, same man. Uh, shout out to David L. Good to see you, bro. Uh, you know, he said he'd be pissed if we trade RJ. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, 
I don't know. I don't know if they even want to. But if they do, if they don't, and we rock out with him, great. But if he doesn't change the way he played last year for the regular season and he looks the same, then I think you've got to move him. But if he comes back and he's, he, he rebounds from that, you know, builds off of that great showing that he had in the Cleveland series going into the Miami series, then, you know, it is what it is. I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. We just got to continue to get better, um, especially at this stage, you know, when the, now it's starting to get serious. Um, so thank you to everybody for tuning in. Thank you to my special guest, Jay Boogie, G Money. Wiz was here. Man, man, man. Ron Cleveland was in the building. I uh, appreciate all you guys. Uh, as I always say, tell a friend who tells a friend who tells another friend. Still, Nick fans will be back again, whether it be on Saturdays at 11 ish 11 15 11 30 for the know the ledge mondays for skf weekly which you your men's runs and john um or thursdays at 8 30 for the nba report on nothing but nicks with ron and john um tune in this monday uh you know we uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be holding it down because because john is uh uh got a, a meeting uh and an event uh, scheduled, but I'll be chopping it up with Mill Media. She'll be on this Monday night at uh, at nine, and so uh, it should be a good conversation. She's a really big Nick fan, um, and she's got her own content that she has on Instagram as well as uh, Twitter. So it should be a good conversation. So tune into that. Uh, we'll put the thumbnail out so you know uh, if you're not familiar, you'll know who she is. Um, okay, well. Hey, man, once again, I appreciate all y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Let's see what these Knicks do, man. It's still, it's still, it's really just early. It's still just heating up. Um, so I, I don't, don't stress. If, you, if you're a Knicks fan and you're like, man, Knicks ain't doing nothing, remember, technically the offseason is just begun. The July 1st deadline for some of these contracts to start going into effect hasn't even happened yet. So don't don't stress. There's still a lot of time. We don't know what they're going to do or who they might bring in. And even if they run it back like we were talking about, they could put it they could bring in a couple pieces and this team could be different than what you expect. It could be, you know, that could be the missing pieces that help us and make that bench. Because I tell you one thing, the Knicks need to get back to having a strong bench. That bench unit mm -hmm. used to be a uh, bread and butter. Um, and it's really gotten kind of light <laughs> since since our starters have improved. So we need to kind of build up that bench again. Um, hey, man, uh, once again, guys, take care of yourselves. Have a great rest of your Saturday. The sun came out. It's not all, I mean, probably partially cloudy, but you could go outside and do something now. So go enjoy yourselves. Uh, take it easy. Pleasure once again, fellas. I'll catch you all on the next one. No doubt. Later. Later.